Your Excellency Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Energy, Mr. Supatana Pong Panmichao, Dr. Vichaya Yud Wunchit, the Chairman of the Page Steering Committee, and also he's the Deputy Secretary General of National Economic and Social Development Council management of the media. I would like to welcome everyone into the launching event, United Nations Partnership for Action on Green Economy in Thailand, or the acronym is PAGE. For this launching event, this is the operated by the National Economic Social Development Council or NESDC with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization or UNIDO on Thursday, November 10, 2022 at Swiss Hotel Bangkok here. And I am Sonaton Sitara. I will be the master of ceremony for today during the registration. I would like to introduce everyone to join the Jamboard activities right in front of this room in order to keep the commitment on green economy after joining activities you're going to get the souvenir that is the page pin right in at my chest. You may join the activities for the whole day of the event today. And today I would like to welcome all the distinguished participants who join us virtually through Zoom and Facebook Live and through the fan page of ours through Zoom. You may choose to listen to either English or Thai. And for the first session to cause no further delay, I would like uh, I would like to take everyone to watch the welcoming session from the age coordinator in Thailand. And today he will give an honor to give the welcoming remark and give the report about the page program. This first one, the regional director and representative of UNIDO, the main agency for implementing PAGE program in Thailand. Please welcome Dr. Stai Hansen. His Excellency, Mr. Supatanapong Punmi Chao, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Energy of Thailand. Dear Gita, United Nations Resident Coordinator, their colleagues from UN PAGE near and far, Dear colleagues and friends, on behalf of UNIDO, I'm honored to welcome you all today to this very important event focusing on building the Partnership for Action on the Green Economy, or PAGE. PAGE offers a unique mechanism by pooling the expertise of five UN partners, namely UNEP, UNDP, UNITA, UNIDO, and ILO, in collaboration with the UN Resident Coordinator's Office. In Thailand, PAGE is chaired by the National Economic and Social Development Council, the NESDC, who worked with UNIDO to put together the submission for Thailand to be a PAGE country. Other key government agencies, such as the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment and the Ministry of Energy, are members of the project too. On behalf of UNIDO, as the lead coordinating agency of PAGE in Thailand, I'm very pleased to convene this official launch of PAGE together with the NESDC to kick off the implementation phase of PAGE together with UN partners, government agencies and stakeholders. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the project is governed by the National Steering Committee this committee is chaired by the NESDC with participation of governmental agencies. These are not just the committee members, but the key founding partners of PAGE in Thailand. I thank each and every one for being with us since the beginning. I'm certain that as partners, they will work with us to bring the program into fruition. Let me take this occasion to highlight some work that lies ahead of us. Thailand officially joined PAGE in March 2020 before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. 
Page's uh, three-year project with a supporting budget from Page of around 1 million US dollars. Later in 2020, Page Thailand successfully won a proposal to support assessment of green recovery projects under the government's rehabilitation funds or green recovery under Page in short. Fast forward to November 2022, our initiative, the Green Recovery Initiative, has progressed well, with a stakeholder consultation being conducted this month. It is our intention for it to result in some policy guidance, which we will be beneficial for Thailand in moving towards the green recovery. With thanks to the NESDC's leadership and commitment, PAGE is moving forward in the implementation of its first year work plan. The first output is constructing a carbon emission trading scheme, or ETS, that acts as a mandatory carbon cap and trade for m major carbon emitters. Some major emitters include fossil fuel consumption-based electricity generation and manufacturing industries. The second key output is strengthening biocircular green economy capacity in agriculture sector aiming to make understanding and practical application to implement the BCG economy at the farm level. Lastly, we will put forward some financing mechanisms to enable sustainable waste management by key actors. We will strengthen and forge their partnership in managing munici municipal waste effectively and efficiently. With a series of seminars taking pla place later this afternoon, more light will be shed on this. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, again, let me thank the founding partners from the Thai side, the UN page agencies and all key stakeholders and participants for joining this launch. UNIDO, UNEP, UNDP, UNITA and ILO are all committed to successfully contributing to building Thailand's inclusive green economy through PAGE. We will come together again to celebrate our page successes over the next years. I thank you. Mr. Star Hansen, ฝั่งในส่วนของการกล่าวต้อนรับแล้วก็กล่าวรายงานในส่วนของโครงการเพจอีกหนึ่งท่านนะคะท่านเป็นผู้เชี่ยวชาญอาวุโสด้านสิ
to enhance the potential for realizing sustainable development objectives. This green revolution has been driven by the improvement of technology, innovation and social imperative, which allow enterprises and workers to adapt to the skills needs and demands of new greener technologies. Of 38 million employees in the country, approximately 31% work in agriculture, 23% in industry, and 46% in services. All sectors of the economy will need to decarbonize, and this brings opportunities for green job creation. While economic sectors transition, no leaving anyone behind. And this is what we call a just transition. Thailand was fundamental in the tripartite drafting of the ASEAN Green Jobs Declaration of 2018. Under the declaration and, thought, and through the biannual ASEAN Green Jobs Forum, we discuss and advance those areas that need to accelerate climate action. For example, and I'm sure that you are all, all of us that live here are well, well aware of the level of PM 2.5 emissions, these very small particulars that uh, do not leave our body once they enter. And for Thailand, it was estimated at more than 26 micrograms per cubic meter in 2017, compared to 31 in the year 2000. So there has been progress. There has been progress. And it can be further progress. Air pollution impacts also productivity. And not just for those who spend, spend their day in a factory, on a farm, also in the services um, uh, economy. There is potential for cleaner transport to benefit breathing clean air in Thailand, but it requires transitioning to clean energy and mobility, which can also unlock thousands of green jobs. And I think this is, this is why the PACE uh, program is also so important, because the jobs can be uh, rich uh, in a way that benefit uh, the economy. At the same time, Thailand ranks 12 out of 35 countries in the Asia-Pacific region in the Notre Dame Global Adaptation Index in terms of vulnerability components. This index considers vulnerability to climate change and related global challenges, as well as resilience and preparedness. Thus, mitigation policies for a just energy transition and coal phase out, coal phase down, will bring positive effects to Thailand vulnerable jobs affected by climate events. And we can prepare, we can prepare uh, for, for that. And green growth is already measurable in Thailand, as one of the countries that has been working on, on, on uh, accelerating uh, the greening of the economy. Renewable energy as a share of total energy consumption was estimated at around 24% in 2018. Renewable energy sources production has an annual average growth of 10% since 2000. These are good news. These are good news. Bioenergy, in particular, accounted for the highest share of total renewable energy generation in 2020. 70% of total renewable energy generation in the country. I think we, we have some lessons here already. Around 159,437 people in the last count in Thailand were employed in the renewable energy sector in 2020. Liquid biofuels accounted for the highest share at 87%. And you will hear today how PACE supports green recovery from COVID-19. The impacts of the pandemic were terrible. I think all of us that were here, uh, our hearts were broken when the pandemic was advancing so rapidly. 
It threatened to reverse Thailand's development gains in terms of labor market development and poverty and inequality reduction. The impasse um, further threatened to erode Thailand's fiscal stability and slow its transition to providing high value goods and services. About 47 million workers were affected by the outbreak, of which 1.2 million workers became unemployed or underemployed. But as we recover from COVID-19, and I think we are in definitely in the way to recovering towards the green economy, that's why we are here. Pace in partnership with the government of Thailand is promoting decent employment for the green recovery towards the goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050 through contributions to policy analysis, policy design, learning, knowledge sharing on equal footing. Equal footing, we want to learn as well as share the knowledge that we accumulate. And climate change threatens people's livelihoods in the past and now, today, the UN Secretary General has declared at the opening of COP27 in Egypt that we are in a highway to climate hell and pushing the accelerator. This is scary. However, the achievements are also here. We are acting. We are acting. And Thailand is acting. And with comprehensive and concerted, concerted policy action to address climate change, we can bring positive durable change to our well-being, create decent employment, and safeguard our planet. I trust this event will be helpful to all of us. I wish to thank you, you all for your participation, both in person and online, because we have many people also following us online. With this, I extend my best wishes for the success of this event. I'm very much looking forward to our interactions today now in the room and after the event. I thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Christina Martinez. Next it will be the keynote speech. And we got the honor from three organizations that they will provide us with the keynote address. I would like to invite the first speakers. He is the page secretary from the United Nations Environment Programs. He will talk about the policy on the global level of page in many countries. So now I would like to invite Mr. Abadi Odekbai to be on the stage. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. It is an honor for me to address you all today in celebration of the official launch of PAGE in Thailand. On behalf of the PAGE Secretariat, I would like to express sincere gratitude to the organizers of this, to this event, as well as to all the attendees who are here with us today. For the past few years, the world has been going through a period of protracted crisis the confluence of the climate crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, along with the war in Ukraine and its spillover effects on energy prices and food security have had and continue to have devastating effects on the economic, environmental and social well-being of citizens globally. However, this context of crisis offers us a unique opportunity to redouble efforts to build economies that are more resilient and prosperous yet equitable and sustainably viable within our ecological boundaries. Furthermore, an inclusive green economy approach remains as relevant as ever at the national level, given its potential to influence policies and financial flows in a manner that promote the resilience, prosperity, equity, and sustainability that are so critically required today. Thailand's orientation towards an inclusive green economy did not start by a joining page. The government, the private sector, and civil society already started this journey before joining this partnership. However, by joining page, 
Tandon is able to share with and learn from peer countries in this partnership who are treading the same path. Through this partnership, Thailand will also receive technical support from five UN agencies who provide international best practices and will tailor them for local solutions. Thailand's existing capacities will also be strengthened to continue the inclusive green economy trajectory after PAGE's formal support comes to an end. The PAGE itself will turn 10 years old in 2023. During this period, many valuable observations have been made and lessons learned. From the PAGE Secretary Advantage Point, I'd like to share with you three of them, which we encourage you to take on board for guiding your work in PAGE. First, there are plenty of needs, but PAGE's resources are finite. It is better to be strategic and focus on a few areas where PAGE agencies can complement each other in order to provide more concentrated and impactful results for the country. That is to say, try and avoid fragmented support. Second, making the economy greener and more inclusive requires a tremendous amount of coordination, both within government and between government and other national st stakeholders. Thus, it is important to ensure there is an effective inter institutional coordination mechanism in place to guide PAGE's work, also assuring its relevance and accountability of all partners. And thirdly, project where you want to be at the end of PAGE's formal engagement with Thailand and think about how to finance both the implementation and the continuation of reforms and recommendations. You could devise page work streams to help address this, targeting both public and private finance. You could also develop partnerships beyond page to help to achieve these results. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the organizers have carefully put together a rich program for you today. I trust you will find today's discussions are stimulating and inspirational for your planning. I wish you the best of luck in making this partnership rewarding for Thailand. And at the end, I wish you all a great day and a successful launch event. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. W. Replied. Our second speaker that will be joining us today, he is the director from page, uh, he is a page management board as well as the director on the divisions of circular economy and environmental protection at UNIDO. I would like to invite Mr. Stefan Sikas to be on the stage. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Mr. Supatunapong Pangi Chao, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Energy, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues. Greetings from Europe and apologies for not being able to attend this important meeting in person due to the extremely dense meeting schedule this November. On behalf of the Board of the Partnership for Action on Green Economy, PAGE, allow me to warmly welcome you today. We are here to officially launch the PAGE Partnership with Thailand. While this opening was unfortunately delayed due to the effects of the COVID pandemic, the actual work under the partnership went already ahead, and we can therefore learn today about important achievements in the seminar on green recovery in Thailand later in the day. Thailand has shown leadership in the development of its biocircular green economic model, or BCG model, which is heralded rightly as an economic model for inclusive, but at the same time also sustainable growth. Our partnership between Thailand and PAGE is very timely to deliver additional support to the government to develop and implement targeted and innovative policies that support economic growth through the BCG model. Our first result from the partnership is the recently concluded Green Economy Policy Scoping Assessment Report of Thailand. It provides the main policy entry points for PAGE in strengthening the implementation of the BCG vision of the government. Based on the report, we see high impact priority areas, for example, in decarbonization through carbon trading, market development, in promotion of a circular and bioeconomy, 
in creating a finance mechanism for waste management of the municipal governments and in strengthening the capacity of public and private actors on green economy. All of these will reinforce the government's efforts in transitioning to an inclusive and green economy. They will not only advance the sought after inclusiveness in an environmentally and economically sustainable way, they will also assist Thailand in achieving the targets of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and the Paris Agreement. Under PAGE's Green Recovery Window, our colleagues from UNDP, as well as us from UNIDO, are leading an evaluation of the impact on SDGs and nationally determined contributions of the 400 billion baht Economic and Social Rehabilitation Fund. I understand that uh, the first draft of this evaluation is being finalized as we speak, so to say, to be shared with the government soon. The report will assist in designing future recovery policies in a greener and more inclusive way. Moreover, PAGE is organizing a series of events on green recovery, which will enhance the knowledge base and develop skills to enable line ministries and agencies of the government to support further implementation of both green and inclusive economic and social recovery projects. Economies are recovering and rebounding from the COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, we are experiencing the effects of the Russian-Ukrainian war that presents severe challenges for food and energy prices and, therefore, on global socioeconomic development. Let me again recall that this and the next week, Egypt hosts the Conference of Parties of the Framework Convention on Climate Change, which will incrementally advance mankind's contributions to mitigate and adapt to climate change. But independent of the results of this conference, climate change is and will remain maybe the greatest challenge of our time. In adverse, its adverse impacts make it much more difficult to achieve the SDGs by 2030. Given these challenging conditions, the only way to achieve these goals is through partnership and cooperation. Such cooperation is demonstrated in the setup of PAGE, where we work with our good friends and colleagues from five complementary agencies, namely ILO, UNDP, UNEP, UNITAR, and us from UNIDO. And this cooperation is the base for our partnership, in particular with the government of Thailand. All these agencies are committed to support you in undertaking coordinated action and advanced policies towards green, low-carbon, climate-resilient development. Over the next hours, you will learn about page support on a global scale and explore in more detail the work in Thailand. I would like to take the opportunity to extend my sincere thanks to the PAGE National Steering Committee and to our PAGE partner agencies, but in particular also to the government of Thailand to trust PAGE with providing support towards inclusive and sustainable growth. I'm sure you can look forward to an interesting, to interesting and fruitful discussions today. Thank you very much. And another speaker for us today. She is the United Nations resident coordinator based in Thailand. RCO, or UNRCO. And she will talk about the UN's missions in Thailand related to the environment project. From now on, I would like to invite Ms. Kita Sapawa to be on the stage. That should work. <laughs> Thank you. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Energy, Kun Supa Tanapong, uh, Deputy Secretary General, NESDC, Kun Vichayayot, donor partners, UN colleagues, government representatives, and friends. I'm pleased to join the launch of PAGE, a crucial joint initiative that brings together the technical expertise of five UN agencies to accelerate the green transition and contribute to advancing SDGs here in the country. 
The UN Secretary General has said that the green economy is the future. Thailand is showing leadership in this through the sufficiency economy philosophy and the BCG economic agenda in alignment with the 13th National Economic and Social Development Plan. The government's commitment to a green transformation is reflected in its ambition to achieve carbon neutrality by mid-century. Its decision to increase the country's emission targets to 30% below a business-as-usual scenario sets a pretty progressive pathway for sustainable growth. In real terms, UNEP tells me that this means that emissions in 2030 will be lower than what we saw in 2020. The private and financial markets, including banks, investors, and asset managers, are also facilitating this transition by making their own commitments. This includes the Global Compact Network Thailand, a partnership of over 100 private sector players, most of whom have set 2050 as the target for carbon neutrality starting last year. This has already contributed to reductions in emissions by 8 million tons, which I understand from Kontanya is equivalent to 1.6 million cars being taken off the roads. However, the sense of purpose to transform businesses premised on ESG also needs to become the norm for small and medium enterprises. They will need the technical and financial support to develop their capacity and higher order skills to service the BCG agenda. The UN in Thailand is adding value by leveraging our convening power, cutting edge scientific know-how and technical assistance based on lessons learned worldwide. The cooperation framework prioritizes an inclusive green economy as an integral pillar of our partnership with a focus on introducing low carbon technologies, offsetting waste management, biodiversity protection, and reduction in food waste. The PAGE initiative saves, serves us as an enabler to further scale up our technical assistance to assist the existing binding constraints for this green transition. These include addressing capacity building for creation and uptake of green jobs, technical assistance for carbon markets, and economic modeling to assess returns on investments for SDGs. Let me outline very briefly three areas that require acceleration. First, supporting innovation in partnership with the private sector will be critical for GHG reductions. Partnerships are key to scaling up science and technology for green transition in GHG intensive sectors such as energy, agriculture, industry, and transport. Importantly, once the best available low carbon technologies are introduced, we at the UN are learning that the private sector is quick to adopt and scale them up at its own accord. As, as has been demonstrated by UNIDO. In a pilot undertaken with the government, for instance, we've introduced crop processing smelters, regenerative furnaces, and carbon absorbing solvents in the heavy polluting aluminum and steel industries. Improved waste collection and reuse, such as by converting waste products into bioenergy, premised on resource efficiency assessments is also being leveraged for emission reductions. These technologies have reduced GHG emissions by close to 6%, these pilots, and are now being scaled up by 70% of the steel and 40% of the aluminum industry here in the country. Second, 
Bolstering resource efficiency will be vital for long-term sustainability. Vast quantities of household and industrial waste, including plastics, remain unrecycled. At present, roughly about 87% of recyclable material is left unrecovered, equaling $4 billion of economic value annually. The PAGE initiative is working to incentivize recycling and improve waste management in pilot locations. In a collaboration with the municipality of Rayong, PAGE is developing mobile applications for education on waste, fee collection, and rewards for separation and segregation. Simultaneously, PAGE is working with the Department of Agriculture to cut agricultural waste in half from fruits and industrial crops, which include durian, mangosteen, palm oil, and coffee, by upcycling waste into new products. The project has already involved 50,000 farmers across 14 provinces and will help secure their livelihoods. Third, creating green jobs will ensure a just transition. The green economy can foster prosperity, safeguard human health and well-being, as well as long-term sustainable development and biodiversity protection. The green economy is still an emerging field, as we all know, but responsible investments by the financial markets can translate into new green jobs and move the needle on circularity. Under the leadership of ILO, PAGE will be a critical platform to take this agenda forward. In closing, I would like to stress that Thailand should continue to lead by example, by setting positive trends in line with the BCG. The upcoming APEC Forum is an excellent opportunity to showcase the country's leadership role in progressing towards the green economy. Thank you very much, and Kap Kun Ka. Thank you very much, Ms. Gita Sabarwa. And next, we would like to take everyone into the official opening ceremony of economy. Partnership for Action on Green Economy in Thailand. And today, this is a great occasion for launching PAGE program in Thailand. And today, we got a very kind honor from Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Energy of Thailand. I would like to welcome Your Excellency, Mr. Pat Supatana Pongpan Michel, to give a real official opening remark today, please. First of all, I would like to say good afternoon to everyone here uh, in the room and anyone uh, joining us online. Uh, may I speak in Thai? Uh, Regional Director and Representative of United Nations Industrial Development Organization, Mr. Stai Hansen, that is that he just gave the welcoming remark a minute ago. The uh, project steering committee of global page program, and also Mr. Stephen Sika, the director of division of circular economy and environmental protection, UNIDO, and Ms. Gita Sabrawa, UN resident coordinator. Thank you very much. And another important person that is the senior expert on ILO in Asia-Pacific region. Dr. Christina Martinez, thank you all very much. And a second ago, we got the representative page secretariat from United Nations Environmental Program or UNEP, Mr. Adebiyi Odekabai, and gave us the great objectives and great example of page program 
distinguished participants and all of the respected journalists who are attending the event on site and online, all the page partner members. I'm very delighted that when I see the page team partners, they are the new generation people join in this great activity. I'm very honored to be the chairperson for launching the Partnership for Action on Green Economy in Thailand or PAGE and the Project Steering Committee of Thailand of what we call PAGE in Thailand, composed of NESDC, NESDC, UNIDO, work with all of the partner agency organized the launching event today as everyone has said earlier that the factors today we face challenges on economy that we just passed COVID-19 pandemic and we face climate change, natural resource, water, soil, and environment that are our constraint. We need to revolutionize revolutionize the use of natural resource in a just and fair manner so that the next generation of people will be able to access the resource like we do as long as the global population keep growing if we still consume the resources as usual. The resources will never be adequate Regardless of that, it will create the climate crisis. So this is the mission of our current population. When we encounter a problem, we all have to help contribute solving the problem. And Thailand, we incorporate in this, in the 13 national and national economic and social development plan. This is the mission that we need to work in the next five years. And is is the milestone major. They are in the major milestone, in the milestone of improving the livelihood, the quality of life of people. Milestone number four to create country sustainability by reducing or uh, focusing on decarbonization in line with the green economy that is the main objective of our event today at the same the fifth milestone is preparedness for our country to cope with the climate change under the new global context in the 13th plan of thailand that um, that uh, Mr. Sika has talked about the 13 National Economic and Social Development Plan. Ms. Gita and Dr. Christina have talked about BCG model. This is a new business model on the economy of Thailand is already incorporated in our 13th plan. It is the matter of biocircular green economy. We're going to work together concurrently we in line with sustainable development goals achievement. And will be similar to UN, but will be a kind of partnership between public and private sector. But I would like to attach prominence to this matter because in Thailand, we work, we have been working on this matter seriously, starting from many years ago in the year 1997 onward, we spent more than 600 billion baht or 20 billion US dollars, 20 billion US dollars on this matter, on working on this and Starting from what is shown on the screen, we start our BCG model a long time ago. All distinguished participants who are here and join us virtually, you might be able to carry on. We launched page program today, and then you might be able to carry on the existing projects that you have done. Allow me to explain to you briefly about this 
table of what we have been working. Everything is alive, and this is a great example to show you that we can take the page activity immediately. Is the scope of BCG starting from the small project that we implement at the community level as a community and community enterprise and go all the way into the capital intensive programs. There are many things that are aligned with the page team members would like to implement. You may carry on or you may expand the existing projects. Many, many programs that we show you the ECI WISTEC is working on the inside to solve the waste management issue. The waste segregation of Thailand has been has been working for a while, but we got a problem with the wet waste. We try to find one inside in order to really waste. the the digest the wet waste of food surplus to convert convert it to become biogas and residual will become fertilizer the fertilizer that is not traditional fertilizer but we are gonna try to have it to be npk fertilizer that can be used directly so you may study for further information. Experiment has happened in a few provinces in Thailand already. If we solve the problem of wet waste or food supply successfully, it's going to make the waste segregation of Thailand to be much easier. As the UN resident coordinator has covered, that's a great opportunity, especially for plastic waste. We have the program on circular economy in Rayong province. You may go to visit the project site there. We take the waste from household and separate in parts. The solid waste, they will separate and sell for recycling to create income instead of to be the liability or obligation, we turn it into the assets or revenue. This has been happening. This is there. This is four sites in Rayong province. We increase one more site in Nakhon Patom province. If page program interested to expand, we might make it to become the project nationwide and the waste collection is not the system that is designed. Everything is designed to be eco-friendly and to be environmentally friendly. Like the, we have to use the, we, we use the EV for the waste collection. So we use the electric vehicles for waste collection and everything is operated by the online system. The household can find out the locations of the vehicles that will pick up the waste and they can input the information, identify and give the money back. This is the an example of BCG model that has happened in Thailand. Definitely, we spend about several years to work on this. If we get the page to help us to expand the results, to materialize it, and to put technology, better technology, and more funding, is going to make the things that we think is slow, it will speed up. The hard thing will become easier. This is what I have listened to the keynote addresses from all experts. I am confident that if we have the page team or page activity going to the field, this will be expand with more efficiency. This is our hope to for the mitigate the global warm, warming and we're going to be able to use the resources effectively and we're going to be able to build up momentum and the momentum will create exponential effect, will be the multiplier, will not be the state linear effect anymore. This is my expectation and I believe so 
does everyone. So this is what Thai people, not only Thai government, private sector, or including the new generation who start up their business, they contribute. And even at the large scale business, the recycling plants, they buy plastic waste and recycle has been established in Thailand already. You may visit the capacity is 30,000 tons for poly, polyester resin food grade, not packaging grade, food grade. And also there is the polyethylene recycle more than 10,000 tons has happened in Thailand already. On the top of that, on the bio economy, we have bio plastics, and today the project. There are many plants in Thailand like poly lapid acid resin, poly PBS, poly bio sassinic resin. All of these are bio plastic that we will use, and in the near future, we're gonna have bio ethylene happen in Thailand. All of these will use the agricultural products or will use agricultural products, mostly maybe from uh, uh, cassava or sugar. And I think we all know well that in the near future, the carbohydrate based crops we will use less and the protein based crop will be used more so we're going to try to take all of these carbohydrate-based crop to produce environmentally friendly products. Pay teams may visit us. All of these projects, certain projects has been initiated already. Some projects are under the construction phase and called protein. It might be linked to the protein base without using meat, animal meats anymore. If we talk about animal meats, it's gonna be in kind of another type of the greenhouse gas emission Then the multiplier effect will be higher than the normal carbon dioxide because it's the methane emission matter. So it's much higher. And the tendency of the new generation, they are more of vegan vegetarians. So, the acceptance of the new base protein like the plant-based protein or insect-based protein can be developed further will be a lot of ample opportunities of new generation that we work at the community enterprise SMEs and involve, involve thousands of people, involve hundred thousand of farmers. So this will be another great opportunity that I would like page team of us that we will start today, that we will start working today, will be encouraged that you did not start from scratch, but you have challenging mission ahead of you. Not easy, very challenging that you have to work on, but you did not start from zero, you start from 10, but you need another 90 to achieve 100. We need all of you. So everyone has to work together, work harder. Full intention. With the full in intention, commitment, engagement to achieve very challenging target. But once you achieve it, you're gonna be very proud of your achievement because this is not for us. This is for our future next generation. We bring in your... It's very important to bring the pride to your mind. I could support it, but, you know, but you know, I'm getting old now. I have two nephews already. Uh, so basically uh, my time is not as long as your you know, page team, okay? So uh, I'll, I'll be doing that. Okay, to support you, but I like to share this slide, make it simple to make sure that it will provide a motivation, okay, and encouraging for everyone that, hey, we must do it and we can do it and we can achieve it, okay, because it's not start from zero. 
you have expert, you can talk to anyone, you know, you, I name everyone here, okay, the name of the people or the company who are involved in the BCG at this moment is in there. Okay. That is something that, you know, Thailand is doing, but we need help. We need help on technology, financing, and the market as well. And we would like to help the, the small guys, okay, the SME guy as well. I'm not really on the, the big guy, like the buy only finally. You know, that capital in the city, let the, you know, let the big uh, corporation to do it. Okay. And in terms of the other, doing, doing, you know, <laughs> bilingual. <laughs> I would like to share, please visit U Turn and other great example. Please visit Wistech. Please go to see the big scale plans. Please go to see the big temple called Wat Chak Deng. The uh, chief of Buddhist monks there that they use polyester to do the cloth of monks. And you say that the cloth of Buddhist monks, I think is not cheap. I would like you to see these wonderful examples. So this is what I would like to show you that is doable and it will create the ripple effect. It will, the effect is huge, is nationwide. That is the way to create the big awareness, the big awareness to see the problem, to identify the problem and play a part of tackling the problem and make a decision to tackle the problem. And this has the huge value, more value than the present, I think, some people understand it, but has not taken the action. If we help expand the project, they're all going to contribute and the result will happen. Everyone will enjoy and uh, make a projects. It might be hard to be experienced by community people. We're going to help contribute on working on page and the other green economy activities to achieve carbon neutrality and to have more renewable energy and to have community enterprise to have electricity generating plans to use a solar energy wind energy including about electric vehicles and the other concern matters thailand we have far progress on these matters I'm very convinced that EVs, electric vehicles, Thailand, we are at the we are at the forefront level. We just introduced the incentive program at the beginning of this year in order to help support Thai people to have experience of using EVs. So it's very successful. Let's say fifteen thousand EV cars have been booked already. It's not like we give them the grant, no. It's not like just for uh, government spending, but this is a kind of incentivize them. EV. Anybody who would like to sell EVs, any companies that want to sell, sell EVs, the buyers will get discount, but the sellers will have commitment to build the manufacturing plants in Thailand. They have to build manufacturing plants in Thailand. It means that there are five companies that already decided to build the EV manufacturing plants in Thailand. So most recently is BYD. BYD company. Before that, there are Toyota, MG, many companies and from European companies like Mercedes or BMW, they are interested to consider to involve in this mega project. Everyone view that Thailand has great potential on EVs and not only EVs, so good EVs, we need clean energy, electricity, or the power that we use in EVs 
must be the power from clean technology. So we try to increase more of clean energy. This is information for all of us, all the page partner members. Six years from now on, we're going to have more clean energy, more than 10,000 megawatts of power, clean energy in many formats, starting from solar cell, solar plus battery storage, wind power, hydropower, biomass and also biogas everything will have the will be parts of renewable energy to achieve the success on carbon neutrality of thailand in the year 2050 so frankly i would like it to be faster i think that if we work at the nationwide level, if we work on the bio and circular economy, light waste segregation, and also try to on the material recycling and also the plant-based products, insect-based products, insect-based protein, if we can work in the wide scale plus at the mega scale, I think we should be able to achieve faster than the year 2050 because what we are contemplating more and more is on the mega investment that is what we call first the forest reforestation will help the pace the page team can help on re on the reforestation and on the capital capital intensive investment the big corporations are working on carbon capture program we are having the we are surveying on the something like the 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 we the the, the let's say that thailand have the very high potential on the carbon storage in the soil on geology we visit norway there are the similar structure like Norway. I think we are even bigger than Norway. If we can store carbon under our soil for a large quantity, the carbon dioxide that we store, that we collect like in the air, they can be collect and store under the earth. So that will be another interesting point in order to accelerate accelerate the our goal of carbon neutrality achievement in thailand faster than the year 2050 so what i have told you what we need to accomplish and what we all need to contribute not only for us only but for our future generation, our children, our grandchildren, and for Thailand today. When I came here, Miss Gita asked me about how is the situation of global energy. I said that it's very hard, very tough. We are a dilemma. We have to decide whether we're going to keep the fossil fuel or we want to go for another alternative energy source that is renewable energy, but the fossil is tough today. But it's, it's still cheaper than renewable energy, so we need to make a tough decision. Uh, you know, we have short term and long term. Basically, long term, we're going to go for renewable, definitely, because we cannot live with this kind of situation any anymore okay we don't want this kind of situation whereby we have to rely on imported energy at the any price we cannot determine the price so so in the future we have to be more self sufficient so we can you know you know stand by our own feet so basically the energy sector 
have to focus more on the renewable local or the you know uh, supporting from the neighboring country that is our uh, key purpose or the key objective of our new energy plan นะครับอันนี้ก็เป็นคำตอบสำหรับคุณกิตาไปเลยนะครับจะได้ครับ this is the answer from Miss Kita so that doesn't need interpretation Miss Kita asked me right in front of the room so this is what I told you that Thai government is so delighted what page team has work on so we are very delighted to work with the UN agency Miss Christina as well you know we are willing to work with you in every matters and also our fellows from Switzerland and Germany I have worked together with the European embassies who have interest on this so I wish this project to be the project that is successful to be the exchange forum we all can contribute at least the peat page page team page local team or page global team to know that Thailand is serious about it we have strong determination even though it might be difficult it's not easy but we believe that is doable and this is a great thing to do so that Thailand will be the 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 clean city the lively city and with the clean air and with the great environment that is friendly for everyone so this is the strong determination and we'll along with the bcg model along as the page program the names might be different but ultimate goals the success are the same so for this occasion i would like to comment organizer the UNIDO, NESDC, all the partner organization and all the page team members who join us today. So today I would like to launch this Me in partnership for action on green economy in Thailand officially. And I wish this program to be successful and to achieve everything as all of you expect. And I wish everyone to play a part develop all of this in the widest scope create awareness understanding and the accessibility to what we are going to work on and i believe that all of this after people in the broad scale can experience they will know the value of what we are creating and will be the pride of everyone who join this program for the benefit of people and the new generation in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, our Deputy Prime Minister and I would like to ask you to be on the stage for the opening remark. And from now on, I would like to invite all the related agency as well as the partnership to be on the stage. I would like to invite Dr. Vitayut Punchit, Deputy Secretary General of NDSDC and Kun Suksidi Jamsuk, Deputy Representative for Regional Office from UNIDO. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Gita Sabawan, the representative from UN Resident Coordinator. UNRCO. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Christina Martinez. The senior specialist from environment and decent work from ILO. And I would like to invite Kun Tida to be on the stage. And lastly, I would like to invite Kun Tida Kun San Udom to be on the stage. And 
we will have the representative from online Kun Mansa. The from Oslo, Oslo, Norway, and also the representative from Finland, from the Deputy of the Environment and Digital Organization, as well as the representative from UNEP, as well as the representative from UNDP. In a moment, there will be the button on your right hand side. And we will have a countdown. If everyone is ready, please count down from five, four, three, two, one. Allow us to have the photo session as well, and our page project in Thailand has been officially launched. This is the signal of the tree to demonstrate as the growing of the trees as well as the progress of the green economy that people would like to create a progress in the countries and now we will allow the press to take the photos this will be, will be the symbolize of the representative of the launch events and we will this will also be one of the gifts for all the attendees as well. The trees will be the representative as the green economy. And this will be like the gift for all the participants so that you can grow the trees as the green economy in Thailand has grown as well. Moving to the second sector, I would like to invite other representatives, another four representatives to take the photo together. I would like to invite Dr. Anat Seri Chetapong, the economist from UNDP. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Johannes Daniel Krishnoff, Colonel, the representative from German Embassy. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Morgan Kundes, the representative from Switzerland Embassy. And lastly, I would like to invite Mr. Mauro Nemini and the representative from Finland Embassy. These are the partner representative that will be joined, that will join our photo sessions. This the tree will be the representative of the green economy and the sustainable growth. It will take a little while for the photo session. Please give everyone a round of applause. And our page has been officially launched in Thailand. 
I would like to thank you all the representatives on the stage. Thank you, our Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Energy, Mr. Subhachana Pong Han and all the Excellencies. As uh, we have, I have mentioned earlier that all the participants, you also receive so our little gifts, which is the tree that you could bring back home and plant it later on. From now on, I would like all the press to be joining the press conference at Jam Jiri Room, which will be the room next door. However, in this room, we will still have other events which will be the launch of the stock taking reports 2022 on the Thailand's green economy. And I would like to invite all the press to be at Jan Jan Room to listen to the press conference or media briefing by Dr. Bichi Ayut Bunjit. Next, as I have mentioned earlier, that for today's event, apart from the opening remark and the open opening the launch of this event, we will have the discussion related to various information related to green economies, and maybe got an honor from many representatives and excellencies from many agencies that we will that the information and discussion will be shared as well as the project's progress as well as the success project in at overseas next as i have mentioned this will be the green economy report in thailand for the year 2022 today we have got the privilege from dr the Thailand Development Research Institute or TDI. He will provide the reasons. And I would like to invite him on a stage. Thanks, our Excellencies, for both who are joining in the room and online. About for the next 30 minutes or so, will be the report that Paige has been working together with Thailand. And initially, we have been working with the Deputy uh, Vishay Yud and the project is about to be done. And I would like to explain uh, the details inside the report. So first of all, allow me to check on the slide. Oh, OK. 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 So first of all, I would like to explain about the profiling in Th of Thailand. This will be the economic profile, social, environmental, and climate change. The next section that will be shown in the report, which we call as the stock taking report, will be about the institutional setting. In this institutional setting, we will have two sectors. The first one will be the international related regarding if you would like to move Thailand to be the green economy forward, what do we have sufficient uh, structural institutions? And the next part will be all the plans that Thailand have. Uh, we will start it from the national strategy and to uh, lead into the branches sector or each uh, department sector. And the next that I would like to present will be the later section, because these uh, later section will be the suggestion or 
in, in a nutshell, I can say that this will be the sum, will be the analysis of the economic governance. I believe that this is quite important because this will be the thing that in order for us to move forward to the green economic transition or not. And of course, we are moving to, towards that direction. However, there are two questions that I would like to uh, allow Thailand to be able to make this is as a doable because we want to, in order for us to reach to the green economy, we want it to be as not as not long as uh, possible. And of course, if we have enough, in order for us to be able to lead into the economy, green economy platform, you want it to move in a faster phase because this will allow us to develop in many aspects. The second question that is also as equal as the first question, which is if we could leave move forward into the green economy within 15 years framework in order for us to reach into that position we should not consume uh, resources uh, in the too much like to over sufficient level therefore we have to be able to lead to that direction by using uh, as least as uh, consumption resources as possible. So therefore, enough for us to move forward into the green economy um, successfully, we have to design the economic framework so that it could lead us in a sufficient time frame. And at the same time, we could use sufficient resources as well. And this will be the target of this uh, structure from this report. So for the first sector will be normal information or the general information that I believe that everyone would understand. And I would just uh, bring in certain information that will be related to the suggestion or the recommendations. But there are many tables in the report that I might not uh, discuss today. The first picture is really important because we have to aware that Thai economy, we have the service and industrial sector, which is one of our majority points. And the agricultural point, there is, they can contribute only 6% of the GDP. And the reason that we could not lead to the green economy or can move forward toward that direction quite slow because we have been putting a lot of uh, natural resources into the economy level that could produce or contribute only 6% of our gross domestic product. And I believe that in the future, we have to make this transition. And this is what like uh, our Deputy Prime Minister that has mentioned that we have to invest in the other sector instead. Because if the agriculture have been consumed a lot of resources, and if you can see that this is only 6%, there are the water resources, we have the land resources as well, financial and also human resources that has been consumed in this sector. If we can transfer these resources, this will allow people in the agricultural sector to have higher income. And at the same time, they won't be in the poverty trap. This will be the first image that everyone should be aware of the factor that what are the factors that we would like to see the changes in order to move forward to the green economy. The next part that will be one of a big role for us is poverty. Even though number of poverty has been reduced from the red line, however, Thailand are still considered as the middle income country. And we have been saying this petition to the point that we can say that we have been there permanently and we can't get ourselves out of the middle income trap. And middle income trap will be around, uh, the annual income will be around 7,000 to 12,000 US dollars per head per year. And the average income for Thai people is, is around 7,500 US dollar per head per year. Like compared to Mar Malaysia, they have been uh, moving up the scale and nearly get out of this range. And I, what I want to see is from five or 10 years from now, we would like to uh, be able to get out of this middle income trap because if we are still, in other words, if we could not provide enough 
uh, income for the citizens, for us to move forward to the green economy is really challenging. For example, we have um, green products that um, we, we are trying to conserve the environment, but the price might be about 10% higher than the normal products. Then this might not be affordable for Thai people. So, of course, we said we want to have a lot of uh, circular economy. We have to pay higher in terms of the utility power. Then this might uh, affect many aspects. So poverty will be one of the key players for us to be able to move forward to the green economy or not. It depends on how fast we can solve the poverty issue and how can we utilize the resources um, with its maximum potential. The next part is we are talking about the potential of Thai people. We have a really good education since the uh, primary level. And for the those who have graduated from the university level is also quite high. But what I want to provide you with the, the report is this number. I have known the number for those who are the graduates who are graduate under the bachelor of environment which means that thai does thai university have the ability to provide the talents that will be able to serve in the green economy or not we can see that we have about 3000 graduates who have been graduated from the conservative environment or conservative energy related, whether it's going to be from the environmental management or even environmental engineer. It means that Thai university educational level, we have that a demand to serve this sector. However, in the future, we may need to have further development and further progress. Imagine if we would like to move forward to the green economy. However, Thai talents have not received these potential, then we would not be able to reach there. Therefore, if the country, bottom line, yeah. in order for the country to move towards certain direction, the bottom line is that the, our talents need to have those skills. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to see our capacity building plan, that which will be the ground work building plan that we would like to reach into that destination. This will be another sector which our uh, Deputy Prime Minister has been mentioned, which is the forest area. If we see the number, our target for the forest uh, coverage, we want to reach to 40%. However, right now we can't reach there. We are at about 30%-ish. And the forest area we has about 10 million acres has been lost. It's not just 10 or 1,000 acres. And of course, you may, not, you may not be able to see the pictures, how big is 10 million acres. But these 10 million acres, when we're talking about the uh, Department of Forestry's budget, it's really, it is really difficult to reach there because for the past 20 years, we have not reached to that level. Therefore, we need new mechanism. We need new incentive for the forest area to be able to reach into that target forest coverage on the red line. And of course, uh, for the forest area, we have that a potential however there are many obstacles that we could not reach into that target. If you don't believe us, you try to plan a sack tree. Just five just five trees. I would say that it is really challenged because it is something that normal people could not yeah, could not come into half the contribution. The next one is about the waste. This is also important because we want to see the waste management. And of course, our Deputy Prime Minister has mentioned about a lot of innovations. And of course, we're supposed to be managed in the national level when we say that we want to stimulate the uh, tourist sector. This is really good. But if you would like to move forward to the green economy in a fast pace, faster pace and not cost consuming means that we need to have the demonstration or the protocol of the macroeconomic. Because for example, if we would like to move forward in terms of a tourism sectors, however, on the other hand, we still have waste problems. So we need a sectoral plan. 
However, when we want all the plan to be combined together, we can see that the development in different sectors, they are, they are we have a problem of the uh, collapsing or combining uh, resources. And of course, in terms of the energy, uh, pardon me, allow me to talk about the greenhouse gas emissions. Mainly, we have three sectors. The first one would be about the industrial process and product use. The second one is agriculture, and the third one is the energy. And of course, um, the agriculture has been consumed a lot of GSG emission. However, we are not focusing on that yet. So we would like to encourage the government sector to jump into this game in order to reduce in terms of the greenhouse gas emission in this. A lot of people think that it might be the burden to the farmers, but if we are put the effort and have that actual action, for example, we could support in terms of the species or even helping with the uh, cattle, livestock farming, then this might be able to support in a long run. So maybe if we change or shift the way of working with the agricultural sectors, we might be able to increase the potential and also at the same time could reduce the greenhouse gas emission simultaneously. And this is our or the target because we would like to aim to peak its greenhouse gas emission in 2030s with the ambition to move forward the carbon neutrality as early as possible uh, by 2050 and towards the net zero greenhouse gas emission by 2065 and we would not to be uh, we don't want to go there later and we would not to waste a lot of resources and this will be the policies for the government sector and Allow me to skip this one for now. The thing that we have a little bit of a problem that encourage us to do something or eager to do something in order for us to lead to the green economy is to this kind of shift that. I call this as the obstacle and these obstacles can be list on the right hand side. Allow me to focus on a few items on the context in the national level. In different countries, we might have different background. However, for Thailand, but the main obstacles come from mainly come mainly comes from poverty. Like I have mentioned earlier, that for example, for example, we would like to do carbon tax. Right now, if we increase the diesel price tax, it will be a big issue. Like for the few months ago. The petrol fund trying to subsidize the diesels to be eight baht per liter. And I know this is not the right thing to do, but the government um, are doing so because if we allow the diesel to be a floating price, then it might affect the poor people. Therefore, if we let this uh, Thailand to still be trapped at the middle income trap, it means that we will not be able to do carbon pricing because we are we are afraid to do so because this might impact with the poor uh, people. So we need to find a solution. One of the solution might be uh, not only about the carbon tax. There are also there are so many other sectors. The government are afraid to tax the coal or to do carbon tax with the coal because this might affect the pricing of the electricity or the power. Yeah, for the natural gas, we have not. Uh, charge the tax yet because we don't want it to affect with the poor people. So if we could just unlock the poverty problem, many uh, things will be able to do, uh, we can be done in an easier manner. Another example could be the green production or green consumption. This is something that we have been done for a long time. However, I can see many cases. However, it's not as widespread as possible. For example, like the uh, styrofoam boxes. Now we're trying to shift into the recycle box. However, this has been shift only in like department store, villa market. But when we go to the fresh market, it is they're still using the styrofoam because we have been trapped in that problem that a majority of the citizens cannot afford to buy green products. And another long problem that has been 
with us for quite a certain while is the solid waste problem. We are still having like the open waste um, area that can cause pollution, that cause the many environmental related problems down into the well and also to the uh, sea or ocean. This is the waste dump is the location where many people who are who have the lower income will be the, the place that they will find they will work there or find something or find val values or treasures in order to make ends meet and we are trying to talk about the sustainable tourism however in order to reach to the to reach to the to that level but we are trying to focus in terms of the mass tourism. This is still uh, in a high, de high demand and we could not move toward to the higher demand or higher a uh, high end tourism, like sustainable tourism. Therefore, if we can't change the problem related to the poverty in order for us to move to the green economy is really challenging. And another reason that we could not solve poverty problem is because I want to focus only this one. The way in order to solve or the solution for this is in Thailand, we use only one policy, which we thought that we would be able to solve the problem by shooting on, shooting shooting one problem, and we could solve two. Or we could receive uh, we could solve two problems. This, for example, by supporting the agricultural sector to support in terms of the uh, pricing level for the farmers. However, the majority of our farmers are in the uh, poor income level. But if we're trying to do the um, agricultural price subsidy, this will not support or strengthen the agricultural sectors. However, this doesn't help uh, poor people. So we have to remove this one and we should focus on this investment in terms of the smart farming or, the, or something like that. And those um, price subsidy policy we are not supporting only rice, but also rubber or even forestry area. The majority of these forestry areas are the rubber agricultural land. So apart from the agricultural price subsidies that might affect the environment, and we should uh, promote in order to create the ecology is to refrain the import of the maize. This one, we are trying to protect the like the agricultural products, for example, like maize or corn, even though the import of these maize and corn might be a little bit cheaper. We're trying to protect the uh, Thai farmers. We can see that this is one of the opportunity costs in terms of the environment as well as the land usage. We could change this um, corn or maize field to grow other forest trees. So there are many policies that we call as the distortionary policy in this uh, that has been mentioned in the stock taking report and we want the government to change the way of doing the way of thinking and in order to change these uh, we believe that this is this would be the economic governance that we have to adjust because otherwise we will not be able to reach the destination or if we reach the destination it will take longer time and will take longer um, and will consume long more resources this would be our last Make your last screen. I want to put everything into one page. That's why it's quite a bit uh, crowded because I don't want those who will read this uh, stock taking report and would confuse. Therefore, I want you to read this page and you will be able to understand the over, overall summaries. This one has mentioned that if we're not doing anything, we might be at the conventional growth paths. I mean, we will still consuming the diesel or benzene gas, and we'll keep cutting down certain trees. We don't want to move forward to that direction 
because um, this will be something that the foreigners might say there's nothing that in the future, for example, if we sell something, then we need to be there because in the future, the, the consumer will ask whether how uh, is your product is a green product. Even the foreign direct investment that joining in EEC, they even ask, do we... Do they have the RE100 energy? Because if they don't have that, they might not be able to come in here. Because even in when they sell the products in the Europe, they also ask, are we using the 100% of the uh, circular energy? So in this market, if we're moving forward to the green economy platform, then we can't allow Thai economy to be only in the conventional path. Deputy Prime Minister has mentioned everyone agreed that this will be the way to go. So if we're not doing anything, means we are not moving toward this direction, but we will move to the conventional growth path. If we want to move into this green area, mean, means that we have to do something. In other words, we have to take the turn in order the, for Thai economy to have that incentive mechanism, a new incentive mechanism that would be able to redirect the economic direction into that right direction. So in order for the Thai economy to turn right, turn, it's like when we're trying to turn the car, there are a few things that we have to do. The first thing is we have to make sure that Thai economy would be able to have the uh, continuous expansion means that we need to maintain the steady growth. So we can't have the un we can't have the uncontrollable impact. This will be related to the first pictures that we have to solve up the poverty issues. We can't have like the one size fit all policy. For example, to subsidize diesel gas, and then the rich might come in in order to use diesel. So, uh, not only for Thai citizens, but also for the neighboring countries also coming in to consume our uh, diesel gases. So this is one point, the reason that I have, I need to mention this because if we are trying to do the wrongdoing policy, this is not to support the poor people because we know it all by heart. In order for us to solve the a poverty issue. One thing is we have to do it in terms of the poverty targeted program. We should focus on that. We should design the program or the project that would support and promote and to help uh, poor people, not to make use poor people as excuse in order to create certain projects. And we also have to um, bring those um, policy that is related to the subsidies in terms of the agricultural prices that should not be that should be removed and when the economy has been uh, put all the resources in and has been reduced all the losses then the economy will have that sufficient power to create the income and once the income can be created then we can add it on with the incentive mechanisms the government might want to do carbon taxes or maybe they might want to create carbon market they might want to do commercial forestries they might try to create like um, free circular energy market we might use the environmental fund in order to collect certain capital, in order to finance the green investment from other sectors. If we could do this, the economy would gradually turn into the right direction. So we need to have the force from the growth momentum. And the second part is we need to have the right incentive mechanism. And one a good thing that the deputy prime minister has mentioned earlier that all the tiny detail the government has been has done this and it has been uh, provided in the bcg model for example the bad economy or the decarbonization but we have that certain distortion that is here and there and missing in the economy that we would like to remove that out and the next is we would like to add on the certain mechanism that we want to put them in and lastly in order the green transition to occur, there will be certain fundamentals that we have to lay the groundwork, and I will call it as the enabling environment. The first thing is we have to have that capacity building. This has to be done. But many, not many developed countries that have high income, 
it is impossible for the developed countries to have a lower economy, uh, lower education level. So we need to have that green training green job to have that upskill. For example, like when we have done the stock taking economy or studies, many organizations say, mentioned that uh, our people don't understand about the green development. So we might need to do something related on that. Another part that I have mentioned that we have to provide certain talents to the government sector, which means we have to do certain modeling that could be trade off between these sectors. For example, if we would like to push in terms of the tourism sectors, then what could be lost in other sectors? For example, if we would like to support with this product, with this sector, what will be the opportunity cost for another sector? This could so this would make it more realistic in the actual uh, market. The next one is we have to uh, amend or revise the law and regulations. Like our deputy prime minister has mentioned, and uh, we have a lot of um, plans, power plans. We can see uh, that. If we are still sucked at the parallel com um, comparison projects, this means that the other ways that has been uh, provided to the power plant might still be concerned, uh, will, will still be the problem. The next one is we have the uh, Climate Change and Biodiversity Act, which will be the main uh, regulation that we have to uh, revise and another regulation that we have to revise in order for us to move toward to the right direction. And lastly is we need to do the en 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 enabling environment, which is the sustainability financing. Uh, if we could increase the sector creation uh, in terms of the investment in the range of the green color by providing the certain signal that the investor would be able to see very then we can see the investor investing sector in more green which means that the market could segregate the range of greens so therefore if our investment could redirect into the way that it's supposed to be in certain level, this will allow certain activities to move forward to the green economy in a faster pace. However, the sustainability investment that will be one of the specialists from UNDP to talk about this one. So in a nutshell, if we decide not to do anything, we might lose a lot of opportunity, especially in the Thai economy. We have to push our economy to the new platform so that we could allow Thai economy to have a Thai people to have a better well-being. And of course, in order for us to move into that direction, there are tiny little projects that we have to work on. And of course, if we could provide the reason to the government sectors, this will allow us to do some things. And at the same time, we have to take care of the people who have come from the poor income level so that they would benefit the green economy as well. This will be uh, on the agenda inside our uh, stock reporting, stock taking report from Thailand. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Adit Isarangkuna Ayutthaya. And this is the overview to make everyone can see that green economy in Thailand more clearly of where should be heading to. And next, we would like to take you into the panel discussion on the green economy recovery by green tools. And we got the honor from the expert online and in person here. They are all gonna give the honor sharing their ideas on many interesting topics on the assessment of the green recovery in Thailand and also assessment of the green labor and the just transition regardless of that we're going to have the assessment of the project by using the 
economic uh, green tools and also we gonna have the necessary training course for the green recovery so this all gonna be very comprehensive panel discussion and in this panel discussion i would like to give the floor to the moderator i would like to give the floor to miss suimon watanaverun the page focal point from unido in thailand please miss suimon and all the panelists thank you very much thank you very much allow me to take off my face mask and according to the program will be Ms. Suksuri, deputy representative of UNIDO to be the moderator, but because she's still in the press conference, so allow me to represent her. My name is Suwimon Watanavirun. Good afternoon again. I am the page focal point in Thailand, and today we gonna have a very panel discussion on the green recovery in Thailand. Okay. And first, because we gonna have the speaker from all live, but we have an expert from ILO giving us the honor to be the on-site speaker. I would like to invite Ms. Wasana Sitarin, the ILO expert. So otherwise, you know, I'm gonna feel lonely. So let's speak informally. We have three more people to be all with us all live first, because we have got a lot of knowledge from the previous sessions. So I would like to take you all into the panel discussion now. First of all, if anybody after listening, if you have any questions or even the online speaker, you may jot down your questions, prepare, and then after everybody finish his or her own presentation, we can have open Q&A session and then online forum will, the question will be sent to us. So for all of the online speaker, we'll be able to address your questions. So but if we do not have enough time i would like to apologize in advance we will answer back to you by email so every question counts first will be mr himanchu chama from unep world conservation monitoring center or unep wcmc environment program will Conservation Monitoring Center, UNEP, WCMC, which is a global center of excellence on biodiversity and nature's contribution. Welcome, Hima. Hima, you are here. Okay. Okay, Hima. We are pleased, we are pleased to have you here with us. The topic around green recovery, right? You propose to us a very interesting carbon reduction mechanism through carbon emission trading scheme. How would you like to convince us that implementing such a system, ETS, will support green economic recovery in Thailand? Please, Hima, you have the floor. Perfect. And good afternoon to everybody. And I'm very honored to have been invited to speak on the issue. So maybe I'll take you through some work that we did in Thailand and then go into the proposals that we have for Thailand, which include an emissions trading system, but also a sustainable budgeting approach. So if you could please change the slide. Perfect. So as noted in the agenda, I was kindly invited to speak to this August gathering about the green recovery brief that we produced for Page Thailand. Um, for the context of my presentation, I have taken the liberty to not dwell on the past but rather focus on what Thailand could do now to ensure a green, inclusive and resilient recovery from COVID-19 and the ongoing global macro meltdown. Thailand did miss an opportunity to effect a transformative green shift in the aftermath of the pandemic, as you can see from the data on the screen. This data comes from the Global Recovery Observatory based on the policy descriptions for the rescue and recovery policies announced by the Thai government from March 2020 through December 2021. But an important thing to note here is that this data does not cover other measures that might have been part of the Thai government's budget in 2021. It only covers the recovery measures announced specifically in response to COVID-19. However, having said that, opportunities still exist for Thailand 
to ensure that the BCG strategy and national development and environmental objectives are not compromised on due to a rapidly deteriorating global outlook, both on the economic front due to the rising cases and again, because of course of uh, the natural disasters that we're seeing from runaway warming. And as part of the PAGE work plan, UNEP proposes to support the design of an emissions trading system or an ETS for Thailand. And in the following slides, I will go through the what, why and how of this issue. Please change the slide. So climate change caused by the increased concentration of GHGs in the atmosphere resulting from human activities creates widespread and protracted damage to the environment, to economies and to society. Because the cost of such damage is typically not incorporated into the price of goods and services that result in GHG emissions, there is no economic incentive to reduce these emissions. The basic premise behind carbon pricing is that well-designed carbon pricing policies can be used effectively to internalize the external cost of damage caused by the climate change in part or in full, thereby providing such an incentive. Now, with a carbon tax, a jurisdiction, for example, regional, national or provincial governing entity in Thailand, imposes a fee per unit of emission, usually a metric ton of carbon dioxide equivalent. And this fee is typically uniform across the economy or a certain regulated sector, and it typically increases over time to continue reducing total emissions. In an ETS, a jurisdiction imposes a cap, so a limit, usually per year, on total emissions across an economy or selected sectors. The government then issues emissions permits to the entities regulated within the ETS, for example, firms or installations, equivalent in aggregate to the cap. These allowances are allocated across the regulated segment of the economy, either through a provision of receiving allowances according to their historical emissions in a base year or base period, commonly referred to as a grandfathering or by auctioning, and may then be bought and sold by regulated entities. And at the end of the compliance period, each regulated entity must submit to the government a number of permits equal to its measured emissions for that period or face a fine. Um, or other sanction. So what's the state of play on carbon pricing? Carbon markets for years short of puff have at least become one of the most widespread tools in the fight against climate change. By the end of 2021, more than 21% of world's emissions were covered by some form of carbon pricing, up from 15% in 2020. Ever more businesses have to pay regulators for the right to release a ton of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And investors are getting interested too. Trading on these markets grew by 164% last year to around $900 billion. This is undoubtedly great news. Carbon prices ensure companies that burn more fossil fuels are at a competitive disadvantage while green innovation is rewarded. And the revenue from the sale of carbon permits, meanwhile, can be reinvested in renewable energy or other virtuous ventures as the government see fit, but more on that later. Can you please change the slide? So talking more specifically about an ETS, most schemes operate on the principle of cap and trade. Again, to recap, because this is technical and I want to make sure that everybody gets the concept, regulators set a total level of permitted annual emissions, this is the cap, and then auction these allowances to the companies included in the scheme. Businesses can then trade the allowances between themselves putting a price on carbon dioxide. And some ETSs also allow financial firms, such as hedge funds, to trade purely for profit on their own account. Now, the best markets put a high price on carbon thanks to a low cap that goes lower over time, providing a strong incentive to go green. They also cover a broad spectrum of economic activity, allowing agents to trade off between burning petrol in cars, coal in blast furnaces, or natural gas in power plants. And the wide scope ensures that trading systems find the cheapest way of reducing emissions, lowering the overall cost to society of fighting climate change. And there are many advantages of ETS over alternative instruments in achieving emissions reductions. One, ETS are effective and cost efficient in the sense that they achieve preset emission reduction targets at minimum cost to society. Second, an ETS can be used to differentiate and prioritize scale, distribution, and allocation decisions in a society beyond growth. Three, 
ETS are capable of attenuating detrimental social effects arising from ambitious climate policy and thus directly answer the Paris Agreement's urge to reflect equity. And fourth, the Paris Agreement explicitly allows for cooperative approaches that involve the use of internationally transferred mitigation outcomes, this is an actual quote, or in economic terms, the trading of emissions rights. Next slide, please. So allowance auctions generate revenue that can then be used in areas reflecting jurisdictional prioritize. Jurisdictions have tended to use auction revenues to fund climate programs, including on energy efficiency, low carbon transport, and clean and renewable energy. Revenues have also been used to support energy intensive industries, as well as to assist disadvantaged and low income groups. The amount of revenue collected depends on the jurisdiction size, ETS coverage, share of auction allowances and allowance prices. Just to give you an example, by the end of 2021, systems worldwide raised over USD 161 billion cumulatively. And taking the example of the EU more specifically, under the current EU emissions trading system, most revenues from the auctioning of emission allowances are transferred to national budgets. And today, if you look at that, and if you look at the projections going to 2030, they estimate that 12 billion per year on average could be transferred to the EU budget. So that's a huge opportunity for the Thai government as well to raise revenues. And again, taking the example of how these funds could be used, if you take the example of the next generation EU funds, these new revenues would finance the social climate fund put forward by the EU Commission in July. And this fund will ensure a socially fair transition and support vulnerable households, transport users, and micro, uh, micro enterprises to finance investments in energy efficiency, new heating and cooling systems and cleaner mobility, as well as when appropriate, temporary direct income support to those who will be affected by this. Next slide, please. So I wanted to pose this question because this is a very fair one and I'm sure many of you might have this in your mind. The problem is that very few markets work as intended. Of the 64 carbon taxes and emission trading systems that existed in 2021, only a tiny minority covering 3.8% of emissions priced the gas above $40 a ton, which the Carbon Price Leadership Coalition, a group of businesses and governments, estimates as the minimum social cost of carbon, which is a measure of the damage done to global welfare by increasing emissions. And that may be too generous already. Some economists put that at more than $200, and many carbon markets are too cheap to make a difference. So why are the prices low? Well, more often, political heat leads governments to do all they can to keep prices low. For example, on May 18th, the European Commission, pressed by member states who worried about soaring energy prices, said it would sell an extra 200 million permits. There are currently uh, 1.45 billion in circulation. And carbon prices on the EU scheme, the world's sorry, second Sorry, Sorry, Hima, uh, uh, yeah. we have run out of time. So if you can wrap it up a bit, please. Yes, perfect. Then I'll just say that we recognize the importance of politics as least as important to the ETS success as the economics. And so our proposed support to the Thai government would go beyond advisory on an effective economic and science-based design of an appropriate ETS to the policy design, sequencing, and engagement strategy needed to successfully deploy an effective ETS that delivers real change for the Thai people. And our focus is on advising and supporting the government to create the win-win enabling conditions to ensure that we can support you close the gap between the perceived and lived experience of environmental reforms and the original objectives. And in doing so, our proposed approach would draw on conceptual analysis on some of the most important practical lessons that are learned to date from implementing ETSs from around the world. Um, I'll already stop here if the time has run out, but if there are any questions about the ETS, and I can also share the slides with the audience, I don't want to sure. delay the program because... Thank you. Thank you so much, Shima. It's a very beneficial information and uh, and actually it's a very convincing message from uh, UNEP. And we will be working more together with the five UN agency on this ETS for sure in this uh, year work plan. Yeah, thank you. So next, so this song, on the second part, I would like to invite Mr. Miss Miss Vasana Sitarin from IRO on IRO and okay, balance society to strike 
equality is very important that page attach importance and is the main policy under the 13th plan and for the green jobs and just transition of green recovery miss wasana and her team have gone to the field to study green jobs and just transition i would like miss wasana to talk about the green recovery please please uh get a slide presentation on thank you thank you everyone i am wasana sitarin from ilo i will share with you on the short story on the process and the methodology for assessing green jobs and just transition for green recovery under page program in thailand green recovery under page thailand green recovery program ilo has assessed the readiness and conduct policy analysis of the green policy and just transition in thailand and we focus to study on agricultural start, start sector study area was in Najam district in chiang mai province we focus on the Kok Nong Na model, that is the one of the six models under the economic recovery budget. The objectives of the assessment of green recovery and just transition, there are four objectives. First is to share technical inputs to the green job assessment and the capacity of organization in terms of policy under the green recovery from COVID-19 situation. And second is to provide a snapshot snapshot of green jobs and just transition policy at the macro level in Thailand, including policy coverage and policy coherence in Thailand. Third one is to provide assessment of readiness at the national and regional levels by focusing on the areas of best practice for Thailand, including to study the opportunity to create green jobs and just transitions for creating policy. And number four objective is to analyze green jobs and just transition focusing in agricultural sector and study the gaps on skills and the linkage to other sector like tourism and also the agricultural tourism. And for methodology, ILO has conduct the qualitative research by using the the job rapid situation analysis method with the five components that are assessment of existing data and gonna be the data is gonna be the data for this for decision and also we conduct the in the dimension analysis in order to assess the constraint that should be resolved prioritization is the capacity to identify problems in sectors especially on geography and demography and the next one is coordination the role of coordination and raise awareness of joint decision and joint coordination among various agencies and next information management is to collect and disseminate information to promote the green jobs and risk management is the capacity to identify the risk for risk of development the data of analysis we got from the literature review and research from concern agency and from from public agency interview, interview farmers, community leaders, and concerned 
people like the Federation of Employers and Employees afterwards for the assessment process we start by assessing the aforementioned data and for case studies I will assess the local stakeholders about decent work green jobs and does transition and the roles for promoting green jobs and participation in transitional period to create justice, justice and the gaps and challenge involved with the green policy in the current agricultural sector. And then we identify main issue and collect the input from the interviewees or interviewees and then we identify opportunities for capacity building to create top green, green employment in agricultural sector after we got the analysis result we will use the analysis result for organizing the seminar for capacity building capacity building and the study tour in study tour in Macham district in Chiang Mai province that we focus on decent work, the green work, and the just transition. Our target groups that we will be invited will be public officials in Chiang Mai province and farmers, local leaders, and other stakeholders. And we will exchange knowledge about green jobs in uh, agricultural sector exclusively. And the next activity that will be involved with the green recovery. ILO is, at ILO is going to organize. We're going to have the tripartite consultation on the 21st of November. With the objective is to share the assessment assessment finding and recommendations for for green job promotion these those appear in the two reports that i just show you and we invite the concerned agency like nesdc ministry of labor ministry of interior department of skill development Provincial Community Development Office in Chiang Mai Province and Institute of Skill Development in Chiang Mai and workers and employers organization to be involved on the 21st November consultation. Then we will organize the seminar to increase the capacity building that is the workshop and the study tour that involved with green jobs in agricultural sector during 24th till 26th of November in Mueang District and Ma Jam District in Chiang Mai Province. We invite about 30 participants and we invite to invite concern agency and the Kok Nong Na model practitioners to Zoom to exchange knowledge and real practical experience. We will study and exchange experience with local farmers and local community leaders. And this is the preliminary example from both reports. Will be the example to show you that Thailand, what have we achieved so far and for national development framework for green economy and international agreements, Thailand has incorporated the green growth and climate change policy in the national economic social development plan from the year 2017. Thailand used BCG model to drive economy forward. And for private sector, we drive investment forward but on the agro industry, like bio industry through BCG model and for the policy framework on green jobs and just transition in Thailand, the green job policy has been included in the 
Office of Natural Resource and Environmental Policy Planning policy and plan from the year 2017 until the year 2036 and Thailand recognize importance of green skills and the need to build green skill capacities of the workforce to be well prepared for the just transition and for respond to the COVID-19 crisis, Thailand, we have the government measures that focus on helping farmers as well. And these are preliminary examples from reports and the content of the reports we will use for come up with policy recommendations according to assessment result and IRO will be able to share data and assessment result more concretely later. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is another activity on the page program on green recovery that is quite interesting and as we look forward to listening to the assessment result on green jobs later from ILO and ILO already identified that on the 21st of November and 24th until 26th in Chiang Mai, ILO will invite all of the uh, stakeholders and that will be the all live format on the 24th of November page program the central office will disseminate this information for you and next next is another important theme that is on green recovery we know very well that Thai government under the green recovery from COVID-19, we have supporting budget for agencies like the central and local agency for green recovery. And PAGE has got the kind support from the expert team from National Institute of Development Administration to go into the field and assess the government project under recovery budget. I would like to invite Dr. Nada Professor Nada Chansom to explain to us about the progress of this green recovery evaluation through the online mode, please. Sorry. Greetings, everyone. You may start. I not hear you. So far, about the report for this project that we have been uh, studying under the, uh, under the recovery of the economic and social under this uh, 400 billion Thai baht rehabilitation fund. We have the team to do the research. Allow me to explain about the team. So the structure of the team, we have the economists and those who are, uh, studied about the sustainable development, which is uh, Dr. Priyanud and also Dr. Achara. And for the economists who are working in terms of the Kon Nong Nam model will be uh, assistant Professor Dr. Santi and also Assistant Professor Dr. Visit and also those who are working under the Cotton Valley Creation will be Associate Professor Dr. Pakapung and also Associate Professor Dr. Jutarat and we also have Dr. Tassini and Dr. Muntian to work on other projects. So for the objectives of the study, we have six projects under this uh, rehabilitation fund. We have to admit that for the rehabilitation of and that we have been working, we are trying to strengthen the economic recovery policy as well as to create the sustainable growth that would move towards to the regional level as well as to improve the uh, 
consumption that would lead to the tourism sector. But now they would like to work, focus in terms of the fundamental level of the Thai citizen. Therefore, we might not focus in terms of the uh, stimulating sustainable economy. So for these six projects, I'll explain a little bit further on this. However, in terms of the conception framework for the assessment, we have separate this framework into three things. The first one will be we're starting from the initiation from the project design until the planning until the implementation. And we will have to take a look in terms of the impact of the projects that might be related to the SDG as well as the a contribution in the national level to reduce the DSG emission as well as the other related factor and the tools that we will use which look into many indicators, for example, like uh, multi-criteria decision analysis as a framework to do the uh, analysis. analysis. Like analysis. And we will use cost-benefit analysis in order to check if we would like to expand this project in the, in the larger level and we would like to make it to be more green economy and to make more inclusive projects. How could we expand or would it be worth the expansion or would there be a, any other benefit with the cost? So what we expect from this project, these projects, we want the policy guide guidance that we could want a suggestion in order to set up certain uh, suggestions so that in the future, if you would like to create certain projects in the, for the government level, how would it serve the green economy or even the uh, green rehabilitation or even to serve the objectives for the SDG? How could we create these structures but in terms of the selected projects for these six projects, uh, the projects that uh, will be the, in the national level, we have the implementation for the entire nation. For, for example, the Kung Nong model, another one will be the Wan Tambon One New Theory Agricultural Group project. The third project that we are focusing on is the TAFE travel safety zones for the travel travel tourism for the tourists we are also focusing on this the fourth one will be upgrading the economy in the central western economic corridor using the bcg model the next one is the provincial level which is to uh, develop the cotton valley creation at Loi province and the next one will be the processing of the solar power dried bananas to generate income for the community these six projects we are trying to find, is there any related dimension that we would be able to provide the overall objective to reduce the greenhouse gas as well as to have the green recovery and at the same time to move forward to the SDG goal. And I believe that this, for this uh, presentation, we are expecting to see these results from these projects. Therefore, this will be the framework that we used for the analysis. And as I has mentioned that for the development criteria that we have set up, we are starting from the uh, starting from the project cycle, which is from the design plan and also the implementation. And of, so of course, the, uh, we want to see the result, the output of the projects. And another thing that we really put our emphasis on is we want to see the result for these six projects. How could we would it be able to reach in terms of the SDG or would it impact in terms of the SDG or even the uh, GSG or even the green recovery? In terms of the indicator that we have chosen for the evaluation criteria, we have two levels. The first one would be the general indicators that we will use to um, assess certain or we use to access all six projects, but these specific indicators will use specifically in each project because they might have the results or the output in each project might be different and the attribute for each project might be, might be uh, different. Therefore, we have these two indicators. However, in this process, once we have get received the evaluation criteria, then we will gather the uh, collect the data and we will gather the information with all the involved agency and we also interview those uh, responsible person for each project and we will go on, on the field in order to talk in terms of uh, with this project manager in the local level and we will also gather information for those who get the ben those who get the direct beneficiaries as well as the indirect beneficiaries from the projects and as i have mentioned we have the limited time frame that for we'll focus only the certain area that we would like to go on site in order to do the case study of course we don't we are not 
uh, study the uh, for the overall location. However, we choose it as the case study, and we have the location that we would like to go on site to do the interview, and to do the uh, data collection. We can see that in for these six projects, all the three dimension that we have been focused, which are the environment, so economic and social aspect. There will be the indicators that are related to the SDG target. For example, for the goal thirteen of S. DG, this will be uh, related to the NDC, which is the, about the carbon emission redu uh, reduction. And we were trying to look on in terms of the activities, how could they have the green rehabilitation or how can we uh, develop the economy in that area, in, in which aspects. Therefore, for the past few months, we have been gathered information in terms of the area, we have interviewed the responsible agencies, main responsible agency, and we have improved. Uh, in, uh, we have been doing the questionnaire every other structure interviews, and we have done this method already for the quantitative methodology. We have gathered information uh, for the related data in order to set the set of uh, evaluation criteria and. We have been using the MCDA, which is the multiple criteria decision analysis to use as the means in order to check the result of the studies. So each steps of the MCDA, I believe everyone might understand about this process. So I may not focus, uh, I may not go into detail about this one, but for each project, we want to see whether could we expand the, the project or should we seize the process or in order for us to make it greener, to make it more inclusive, how could we develop into that manner? So therefore, in this, we also have the options for the MCDA. And once all the assessment will be put into the model and we will provide certain options for each project. And of course, for each project, apart from the MCDA, we will also use the cost benefit analysis. And for this point, at the MCDA, we have to put it into five main criteria or five main characteristics, which from these five main characteristics, we have to see whether is it relevant to the, the relevance, would it re relevant to the be direct beneficiaries? Uh, do, are there any inclusive with the benef direct in beneficiaries? This will be related to the project design and project planning and the framework in order for us to do the analysis for these five aspects. We have developed from the framework from OECD that has been a success as the analysis framework. And we will see in terms of the efficiency of the result. And we also look in terms of the efficacy result as well. We would, would like to see how can, what are the results or what are the resources that have been used and would it be um, used in a maximum potential and would it be worth the uh, consumption? And we have to do see this specific indicator in, that would result these impacts. And lastly, we are looking in terms of the susten sustainability to see that how sustain of each project and can we continue these beneficiaries and can we continue to deliver these results? Is there any challenge or problem that we could not uh, continue the sustainability of the project? And this will be another analysis framework that we have been using in this project. And we also wait in the determination as well. And we have set equal weight for each criteria. However, in the impact criteria, in the, for the plan of the uh, economic impact, we are focused in terms of these uh, economic and there's a more a focus more on economic impact than the social impact because because um, because of the COVID crisis that has been impact, we have to check in terms of the uh, economic recovery after the COVID nineteen pandemic. So we are waiting in the in this aspect a little bit more. And of course, we has been analyze another dimension, which is about the cost benefit analysis. Because if this a project that we has been initiated, we want it to make it be a little bit greener to make more green economy. We want to serve in terms of the environmental rehabilitation or to serve the environment, or we want to make it to be more in inclusive. We have to see how worthy would this project be. So that's why we use this tool as the, uh, the cost benefit analysis tools to analyze. And, and we have gathered all the information. But uh, however, we have I have to mention we haven't resulted in show the entire result of these studies, but we want to show the result of the study that we're trying to focus that these six projects and in the overall aspect. When we and we have been using this budget 
I mean, whether it's going to be the uh, dimension in terms of the green recovery, in terms of the ESG gas reduction, or even in terms of the SDC target related, we are trying to do the study in a detailed manner and we're trying to use the policy guidance in order to set the policy for the future because we would like to focus on in the future if we want to work in terms of the government policy and government project to serve the sustainable development. How, and to do the green economy, how can we set this up in a better manner? And we want you to see in terms of the economy, social and environmental aspect and high impact. We can see that this project can create certain impacts in the holistic manner. So this will be my presentation for now. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Dr. Nada. This is, these are the projects that are really in detail and we use six teams. This is quite interesting and we are looking forward for the result of the NIDA's team. And for these projects, UNIDO as well as UNDP has the specialists, not only from Thailand, but also from overseas uh, supporting these projects. So we have listened from, from ILO and uh, UNDP. From UNDP and UNIDO, and NIDA has been working together in terms of the economic and social aspect. So now if we are talking about the potential of the, if you want to use the green recovery, recovery to be implemented in terms of the organization level, as well as the uh, private level. So another interesting topic, if you would like to talk about the green recovery, we have played very important roles in the recovery level. So what would be the learning or what are the knowledge that we need in order to implement the green recovery in the environment, social and economic aspects? So now we have uh, Professor Superman Salim from the Pro Green Center Faculty of Economics from Tamasat University to give us the discussion related about the green recovery learning needs assessment and training modules development. And I would like Dr. Supawan Salim to uh, provide the uh, presentation. You have only 10 minutes for the presentation. Thank you so much and greetings everyone. Okay. For this report, the Policy Research Center on Green Economy has studied in order to see the needs to provide the capacity, capability for the Thai uh, government sector. So for this uh, study, it is a study in order to develop as the training model in the future because capacity building is one of the important factor as the collaboration between the United Nations as well as other agency because we would like to move forward in order to get the green crop the sustainable green recoveries and at the same time the framework that we will be using to interview the government agencies in order to see what are the demand that they need for the capacity building, we have been using the framework by interview that the, that the worker has the readiness for the social and economic recovery policy or not. So there will be three themes that we will use in a green and inclusive recovery. The first one will be green industrialization, the second one will be circular economy, and the last one will be green jobs and the transition and has been uh, funded by UNITAR. Next, before we initiate the study for the in-depth interview with the government agency, we have to set up the competency framework so that we know what are the skills and the knowledge that they need in order to re improve the green uh, the, um, social and environment of the green uh, development policy. So the first thing is the key concept we have to to see whether they understand about that those key concepts like the green economy and related concepts and principles. The next one is how can they use the integrated uh, green economy and green inclusive recoveries to be implemented in the work or not. And the next one is the global and the 
personal development of the twins, for example, like do they understand about the SDG target? Like for example, in the Europe, what are the the CPAMs that has to be implemented? What will be the impact? The second group will be about the national and the policy context. Will be the national policy that is related to the green economy in those pillars that we have mentioned earlier. And then the last one will be focused in terms of the knowledge in the three pillars, especially in terms of the green, will be the green industrialization, green circular economy, green jobs and transition, as well as the green finance. And we will use all the new innovations and new knowledge to change the platform and change the format. We would, and we have been set up the competency level into three levels to see whether that's the, uh, what level does these people has in the in this in this uh, in this concept? There will be starting from level zero, level one, and level two. Basic uh, level zero means the basic, which means they have no or very little knowledge on the competency area. The second one be the awareness that they have some knowledge, and then the last one is they have a lot of knowledge in terms of in that concept. The next one is we have to have been doing the in depth interview in terms of the structure level and we have found out that for the capacity assessment results for the knowledge for the Thai government agency in many aspects that we have been set up this framework you can see that the green bar which shows the capacity level that you could uh, I think it's the I think it's the blue level uh, this one is the capacity level in the practical level. We can see that on the far right bar, we have only limited limit number of, of the people that will be able to use this implement. People usually understand, have that awareness of how could they implement, uh, uh, how to implement, but in the actual level or the reality, they could not be implemented in the practical level yet. <laughs> This is the table to show the result of the capacity assessment, especially in terms of the impact. That we would, uh, we want to see the impact in some of the economics, social, and environment aspect. The result that shown here is when we are talking about the social aspect. The analysis in terms of the policy and the impacts of the social aspect. There are still certain gaps, and we might need some trainings in order to reduce these gaps. And then, for when we're talking about the understanding about the green industrialization for the circular economy and the green job and the just transition, we can see that our human resource. Uh, they uh, mainly understand about the theory level. However, when we're talking about the practical level, in order to put it into the policy, practical policy level, we might not, uh, we have limited uh, capacity, especially the green job and just transition aspect and also green finance. It, it, there is there are the high demand in the training models for these items. This is the key capacity assessment from the government sector in order for us to move forward to the sustainable green economy we can see some similar trend that the government agency mainly they understand about the theory, theoretical level however when we are talking about the practical level in order to be implemented in the real world and at the same time when we are talking about the opportunities and the challenges analysis and how to push the green industry 
decentralization, circular economy, and the green job, green job and just transition. They still need the training in, in the practical level. And when we're talking about the practical level, that we also have the impact and the, in the results so that just quite similar to the theoretical level because these three aspects, we still need the uh, training model to be implemented in the practical level. This will be the overall summaries of the assessment of the training development for the green economy for the human resources in the Thai government agencies. And of course, that each government agency there are different capacity in different aspects. And for Thai government agency, they have the understanding that the recovery plans that we have as of now are the short-term plan and we might not have the long-term recovery plans. However, the, the people in the government, Thai government agency might not be able to use the capacity to link with the green-related economy or green-related activities. So when we are doing the analysis in terms of the possibilities and opportunities, if we could integrate the green policy to the projects or the plan. Therefore, we have been setting up the priorities for the training models. Those um, related training models that we would like to push um, Thai government its agency so that we it could be linked to the green uh, policy or green economy so that they could integrate this green policy to be in the recovery plans. The next part is and how can we initiate new policies or new plans so that we could create the policy roadmap or the other tools that could be implemented or analyzed in the con environmental, social, and economic aspect. And the next one is we might need green area related that we have to start from the basic awareness and we have to start from the, from the beginning. The next slide. Motivation for the Thai government agencies that would like to join the training that is related to the green recovery plan. And because they would like to have the actual practical level and they might want to have this case study or success stories from overseas to be the example and see how can they implement these uh, success, success story in their work field. And they want to see the tools to evaluate and to measure the positive and negative impacts of the policies and projects, such as the values to the economies, to the social and the environmental aspect. And they also have the inter resting in terms of the innovation lab and the design thinking. This could be the soft skill that could help the potential and the effectiveness of these uh, policy so that they could have a better innovation. And for the result, in order to, do the, to develop the green economy, we will improve as the uh, Unido. capacity training program that will be developed by ILO, UNDP, 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 and UNITA. In these uh, topics, for the main topic, we really get to the green and inclusive recovery that we will have the example from the success stories and the case, case study in Thailand regarding about how can we realize the opportunities to build economic forwards for uh, uh, for, with the green economy as well as other tools that we could use in order to plan to plan out the policy to make it a better aspect. And then the last one will be about green finance. These are the list of the organizations that we have been doing the interview as well as the surveys respond. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
professor named Superwan from the Paul Green Center in Kamasad University. She already showed that there is a gap of the uh, knowledge in the policy maker and practitioners doesn't matter within the uh, public, private or civil society organization. And she said that we will have the future training and now we're going to come to Q&A session, but because of our time constraint. So I would like to collect all of your questions for the participant who join us here and join us online and we will submit your uh, submit the answer to you directly. Thank you very much for the session on the green recovery. And please follow us, the follow up the progress of ILO work and also NIDA work, UNDP and UNDP. Thank you very much. Thank you, the speaker and the moderator, Ms. Wimun Watana Virun all four speaker who have exchanged with us on the green recovery in Thailand with the green economy tools. We will continue with the learning experience sharing from our partner agency page in order to support page Thailand implementation plan 2022 and we got the honor from the moderator today with the direction of global page work we got the honor from the technical team member from UNIDO I would like to give the floor to Dr. Usunimi Iti please Page Global Technical Team Member and Industrial Development Officer from UNIDO. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this session uh, is uh, a very important uh, session. I welcome you to. Uh, we will be looking a bit closer uh, to share learning experiences from the different... Can you hear me? to share learning experiences from the different page agencies. Uh, as you heard uh, the Minister of Energy speak uh, earlier on today, he identified so many different needs uh, of the country when it comes to a uh, uh, green uh, economy. Uh, he mentioned the uh, circular economy. He talked about biotechnology. He talked about uh, electric vehicles, financing, also the, the BCG uh, model, and so on. And as you can see from all of these different um, needs uh, of the country, uh, they are quite multidisciplinary. And so uh, the government will really need a different hands and different types of experience and expertise to help them to make this uh, transition uh, to a green economy. And this is really where all of the different page agencies come in. Uh, we have uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, expertise uh, and experience in different areas, and which is also uh, interconnected. And uh, so we work together and try to come up with meaningful response and support uh, to uh, the government in implementation. Uh, at the same time, we support this uh, response at the country level with a global package uh, uh, that is designed to uh, uh, not only help address uh, a com the complex uh, the challenges in the green economy transition, but also to really help to work out those interconnected areas. And that's why today you will be hearing from myself. I will talk about the global uh, service package that uh, PAGE has, but ILO will also talk on green jobs creation and just transition. Uh, UNDP will speak about uh, 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 national financing 
uh, uh, Nido will speak again about green industry and smart agribusiness. And we will hear from UNEP on uh, financing mechanisms for sustainable uh, waste management. If I would just, if uh, we can just go quickly into the presentation on the global service uh, package. Thank you. The next slide, please. <clears throat> So uh, this global uh, service package uh, from PAGE uh, really serves two purposes, to create a knowledge and uh, um, have uh, outreach to the public, but also to build capacity uh, of policymakers to be able to design and implement, but also finance a green economy uh, transition. And as I mentioned before, it has uh, the ability to both address the individual uh, complex issues uh, uh, of uh, individual things, but also to look at the inter interconnectedness between the, these things. So, um, of course, if we want to create policies, these policies really need to be informed and uh, should not just be uh, uh, built on uh, the wishes uh, of either the public or government, but we really need to have the right tools and the knowledge to address uh, uh, the different issues in the policies and uh, also to be able to, to see what the impacts of those uh, policies will be. But also we have, uh, uh, we try to um, um, host global events and conferences and really expand uh, our outreach uh, uh, to the public. <clears throat> to build the capacity of uh, policymakers for green economic transition, we deliver training courses, uh, de continuously develop new training materials, and we try to uh, facilitate the exchange among countries uh, on learning issues, but also on capacity uh, uh, development. Next slide, please. Uh, so, the <clears throat> so we can have a look at some of the knowledge products and tools that we have for policymakers. Um, we have developed many of them, including green economic modeling, which really tries to look at the different. Uh, to train uh, uh, people to look at the different impacts of the policies. Uh, that they are uh, developing, whether they have positive impacts in one aspect or negative impacts, um, uh, to give guidance. So we have the practitioners uh, guide uh, on strategic green industrial policy. Um, <clears throat> we also have a dedicated uh, COVID-19 resource hub, which really contains so many different resources that are related uh, 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 to uh, recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, including a data observatory that tracks fiscal and finance measures that have been announced by partner countries, uh, along with social, economic, and environmental impacts of, of uh, the pandemic. Next slide, please. So we have a variety of uh, uh, training uh, uh, courses in our e-learning portfolio. And there are seven peer-reviewed e-courses and we have them in up to nine languages. Uh, these courses cover the areas of green economy, sustainable finance, green fiscal policy, green economy, trade, and green industrial policy. Um, through these uh, courses, learners can educate themselves in their own time for free, and they can, they also receive a certification at the end. Uh, we also produced a podcast uh, package on uh, different uh, topics uh, that were identified by the partner agencies. Next slide, please. We hold global capacity building events, and uh, these events really help uh, to um, to connect more with our stakeholders uh, in our member countries, uh, but also to be able to get uh, new ideas uh, from uh, external uh, partners who are working in academia, in 
um, uh, NGOs or international governmental agencies and so on on the topic of green economy. Uh, we have the Global Green Economy Academy, which happens biannually. Also, the Green Industry Summer Course happens uh, biannually. And the Global Forum on Green Economy Learning, uh, which we do in conjunction with uh, several other um, organizations working in the area of green economy. <clears throat> uh, PAGE has established uh, uh, an economic advisory mechanism called the Green Team. And it's really made up of the economists from page partner agencies, but also UNRCO economists. And this team gives uh, targeted advice uh, to page uh, countries on macroeconomic transformation. So for example, the stock taking uh, uh, study that was uh, presented today, uh, the green team was able to give some advice on how that study should be uh, approached, what elements should be within it, and so on. Uh, the team at the moment is also leading an economic transformation analysis in Indonesia. What we call uh, impact scalers in PAGE, uh, it's really um, uh, uh, topics that build on the elements of the global services package and try to respond to global and regional uh, opportunities, as well as emerging trends that offer new pathways for change. So, for example, we try to uh, maintain a good presence at high level political events to make sure that the topic of green economy remains at the forefront of, of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of the public uh, agenda. So, in conclusion, um, these uh, products that we have at a global level, they really help uh, uh, the countries to be able to have a basic understanding of green economy issues and to help support them on the uh, uh, implementation of, of uh, the activities at the country uh, level. And um, on you can find the links uh, to the different um, global products that we have. So when you get this presentation, you can have a look at all these different products. Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> hello, uh, next, the last slide, please. And uh, so, um, we can now end this session and uh, we'll move on to the next uh, speaker who is, um, I understand Ms. Christina had to leave, uh, Mr. Eric Roda from the ILO, uh, who is a technical specialist on green jobs, will um, speak uh, in place of Mr. Christina. Huh? Let me get closer here. Sorry, I'll try that microphone. Okay. okay, thank you so much for that kind introduction. Yes, uh, Dr. Christina Martinez, who's my boss, she needed to step out, so I'm doing this presentation on behalf of her. I am, as announced, uh, Eric Rader. I'm the ILO Technical Specialist on Green Jobs, Climate Action, and Resilience through Just Transition and Pupatsat Thai Dynacup. Uh, by song, by samong, my samong, my koi kangrang. So put pasa angre katon nakap. The presentation ti angre nakap on the cap. So uh, first slide, uh, there it is. Okay, so I'm replacing uh, Christina here. So we go to the next one. Okay, so let me go to my notes as this was, just came to me. So firstly, um, natural systems and biodiversity are critical to employment and ensuring positive social and economic well-being. There are approximately 1.2 uh, billion jobs in sectors such as farming, fisheries, forestry, and tourism. And as you can see, these are all very important uh, sectors in, in Thailand. These sectors are dependent on effective management and sustainability of healthy ecosystems and are closely interrelated with biodiversity conservation. So, what are the challenges here that uh, we're facing when we want to transition to uh, uh, greener 
jobs for, and just transition. So firstly, uh, among the challenges are massive loss of jobs and livelihoods disproportionately affecting women, youth, migrant workers, and workers in the informal uh, economy, the labor market. Reco and labor market recovery stalled in 2021 and remains uncertain uh, for 2022 and beyond. And again here, growing income insecurity, more than half of the global population is without access to any social protection. So when we talk about green jobs, we're also talking about social, uh, social justice. So no, no gene, there's no such thing as a green job without social protection. So these are things to keep in mind. And this will offset crisis resource needs to close the financing gap, increased by, you know, SPFs by, increased by 30%. So as you're very well aware, and as we can see globally, there's a triple plan planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity, loss, and pollution. And also multiple and intersecting inequalities, mistrust, and frayed social contract. And then additionally, uh, two-speed recovery. Job recovery in developing countries has been hampered by fiscal constraints. Uh, and it says here, global solidarity in retreat. But what does that mean? It means basically it's been exacerbated exacerbated by COVID. And as you have seen uh, globally, we're not, we're not working together very well, and we need to improve that. We, and I think as of now, it's still a failure. But we need to come together, all the countries, to address these issues. So noting this, uh, when it talks about, uh, in the middle there, the equivalent of 80 million full-time jobs will be lost by 2030. But, uh, and that's due to heat stress. But, but, What's not, not in this slide is also the, the loss of productivity because of heat stress. And I don't have the numbers on that, but uh, if you're in a factory and the temperature goes up by three, four degrees, you're certainly not going to work, be able to work uh, as efficiently as you would if, uh, if you were able to cool cool the factory, uh, uh, be in a cooler factory. It doesn't mean having to use air conditioning, for example, but just changing the roofing material as uh, the climate warms up. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So climate change will impact almost all sectors across the whole economy. Actually, it will impact all sectors. I, I can't see any sector that will not be impacted by uh, climate change and its resulting uh, erratic weather events that increase uh, disasters. So, but there is a positive net gain for our decarbonizing policy. So. When you look at this, there's a shift to greener economies, new jobs are created, some jobs are substituted. But uh, as you move from a cleaner, uh, when you move from a dirtier process in a particular sector, such as coal mining, you move to a cleaner, uh, cleaner sector, there are, uh, a, that, those jobs will be eliminated, but the, the people in those sectors can be moved away from dirty jobs that impact their health and safety to cleaner jobs or cleaner processes where the co-benefit is increased occupational health and safety. So the next slide, please. Okay, so here's a couple of things to look at. Is the next change in, uh, in employment in the climate change scenario for 2030. So if you look at Asia Pacific, uh, you see that uh, these numbers are 2018. So uh, Things were going well at 14.2 million jobs were increasing as uh, in, in the area of green, uh, green jobs and job skilling. But now, since, since COVID, we don't know what the total impact is. Now for Thailand, there's a skill shortage and, and surplus in selected Asian countries. But for Thailand, the number of uh, jobs uh, uh, in the skill sectors needs to increase because right now it's falling. So there needs to be investment uh, in uh, reskilling uh, people in the country so that, so that they can take advantage of the, moving towards a, a greener economy. You know, and, and then one of the major challenges for greening labor markets and job creations is to make sure that workers, especially youth, have the right skills. So, uh, next slide. Okay. Green jobs, which I want to uh, point out, are also just jobs. So when you hear the term green jobs, you also have to think of just jobs. And those are jobs that do not leave anyone behind, 
our decent jobs uh, and uh, and come with uh, social protection and uh, of course the uh, green jobs also have the co-benefit of increased occupational safety and health so if you're in, in most simple terms if you're working in a factory and you're able to point out that a boiler uh, there's a boiler leak and you're able to fix that uh, and you're empowered as a, a worker to have that leak fixed and you tell your management in pre that small, that small little bit of uh, improvement, of increasing your energy efficiency, also has a, a, the co-benefit of improving your occupational safety. That's just at the micro, micro level that I wanted to share. So, when you look at this, you can see that green jobs help to do improve energy and raw material efficiency, limit greenhouse gases, minimize waste and pollution, protect and restore. Uh, ecosystems and support adaptation to the effects of climate change. Of course they do because uh, when you're a green job is a more resilient job. So if you're, for example, expanding your energy mix, uh, you know, not just focusing all your uh, on coal production, but uh, you have uh, biomass and so forth, you're, you're, you're building resilience. Uh, to your supply chains, to your factories, so they have uh, have a less chance to be impacted by uh, by erratic weather such as drought, as we saw in Sichuan, China, where the where the uh, drought impacted the the hydropower plants in Sichuan, and there wasn't enough water to go through the hydropower plant to, to generate electricity. So what happened was there was rolling blackouts. And that led to uh, supply chain disruptions, and people uh, uh, actually lost their jobs uh, during that. So this is the thing when you have to think about it. when you're not just—it's not just a green job, but a resilient job. So, and the next slide, please. Two minutes more. Okay, thank you. Okay, only two more slides. So, how can Thailand promote green jobs? So. Firstly, uh, we're dealing with the policy level. So regulatory frameworks, incentives, and sustainable procurement. And, and then, of course, secondly is enterprise development and entrepreneurship. And these can be supported by green business development uh, services. So I, Thailand has a very good uh, business development service uh, program. And, these can, and this program can be green to support uh, budding entrepreneurs to develop small, medium enterprises that are greener. That means uh, they, they choose to put in, in their business plan energy efficiency, greener production. And when you put this in your business plan and you want to gain financing for this, it'll actually be easier to gain green finance. So this is one thing to look at. Okay, green skills and employability. Uh, when you uh, change, when you green up your skills, and uh, you're increasing your employability, but you're also uh, increasing more decent employability because you're working in a safer environment, cleaner environment. And then green works, public employment programs, and this should include, you know, green and resilient infrastructure. You don't want to put uh, infrastructure in that we're in 20 years because of climate change, it's not going to be functioning. And the, an example would be a hydropower dam and uh, you wouldn't build it in an area that has increasing drought and impacts the biodiversity of where it's being built because by the time it's done, it's not, going to, it's not going to generate any profit for you. So these are things that need to explore. And so let's go to the, the final slide. Okay, and these are some of the tools that are available on uh, the ILO website. We have the uh, Just Energy Transition for Southeast Asia, the impacts of coal phase out on jobs. Uh, we have the Just Transition Toolkit uh, uh, for the textile and garment sector as well as the energy sector. And uh, you can see on the far right, uh, the countries that uh, we've done these toolkits is, is for Cambodia, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Vietnam and Malaysia and India. And, but uh, the best practices that are shared here can also be maybe of use and applicable here in Thailand. And then the reverse is also true. Uh, as civil servants, we're at your service here. So we also want to learn what's going on in Thailand so that that can be shared uh, with other countries. So it's about uh, co-learning and so forth. And with that, thank you uh, so much for uh, stay, staying around this afternoon. And I hope uh, if you have any further questions, I'm only, always available to take your questions. Thank you so much.
Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Roda. It was really interesting learning about um, the impact of green jobs and objectives of the decent work agenda, but also the potential of Thailand to, to also to promote green jobs within the country. Uh, I would just like to make a small announcement to uh, all speakers to please try to uh, constrict your presentation to uh, seven to eight minutes if possible, since we are running out of time. Uh, next, I would like to call Dr. Anouk uh, from uh, UNDP, who will talk to us about building a green finance in Thailand through integrated national financing framework and the support to green finance. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Nimi. And um, nice to see all of you, uh, my colleagues again from various agencies. Uh, sorry to all of you because, um, because I'll be speaking Thai, given the audience. <laughs> so you have to put on your translation mode. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving the honor to UNDP to be a uh, an agency to present of what we have been doing and moreover green finance is so critical and how are we going to advocate this and today uh, my name is anak or my nickname is Pin. i'm gonna talk about one tool that undp has studied and has worked together with various agencies to advocate not only green finance, but also to advocate for integrated national financing tools, or what we call integrated national financing framework for sustainable development is not the UNDP tool, but is the tools that global leaders have agreed together at Addis Ababa. Everyone has agreed that SDG need financing, not only need financing from either public or private agency, but that means it must be in the mode that all hands on deck that every sector has to contribute. Please remember this diagram. The interesting point about this diagram that it's telling us that what part of finance will help to on the SDG on economics and on society. Every country, even Thailand said that in the year 20, in the year 2030, sustainable development goals or 17 goals must be achieved. And how we can use our finance to help. First, we need to have financing framework. Actually, at the middle, of this year, UNDP joined the G20 Finance Summit that Thailand and many other countries try to attract the private private investment. For example, like hedge funds, private investors said that regardless of they want to see the national development plan, Many, many countries, they have national development plan, but they would like to see more. They would like to see the, the national financing plans, policy, the investment promotion scheme. How are they going to be in order to achieve determine SDGs? Because private sector doesn't matter in Thailand or in other countries. They would like to get the clarity from government and this INFF will help. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, it's not only the private finance, but also not only the public finance, but we also need the private finance. Public finance doesn't cover only budgeting, but in terms of issuing the physical policy to promote SDGs like the tax and non-tax measures like issuing the bonds and issuing the other types of financial instruments. And in terms of using the overseas development assistance, actually Thailand has developed so far and this money is getting less and less, but it still can be used 
funding like the seed funding in order to expedite the the uh, to attract the money from other sources and what about in private sector especially in the domestic and international private sector their money are so critical to sdg achievement but when they gonna invest the important question that what are they gonna get in return and many private entities that what are they gonna get not only the profit but they also talk about what they would like to get from their investment how are they gonna contribute to this development they would like to follow up let's say that if they invest in stock they're gonna follow up on the profit profitability but they want to know that let's say that if they invest how that area will be developed whether the pollution how much pollution will be curbed down how much it will contribute to society so we need to close the loop by having the impact measurement to see that the money that they invest will go into the real development crop INF and the INFF how it's gonna help surely we talk about the money from many sources from public and private sector to many tools this INFF will help there are three benefits first is to make the national plan to be supported by financing plan second benefit we talk about the public and private investment through all kinds of tools and will attract many partners to work together from domestic and international public and private entities now 86 countries have come up with this inff uh, let me go through quickly pre-covid thailand need to invest more about 11.6 percent of gdp before COVID-19 in order to achieve SDGs. But post-COVID, the investment, there will be more than 11% of SDG. So INFF said that this is a must-have tool for every country. We have time constraint. We will need to skip some slide and how INFF help green finance. Actually, uh, Thailand has worked on green finance. Finance. We are the second ranking in ASEAN in terms of issuing the debt instrument and the bonds for sustainability. And there are many projects that UNDP was involved about green finance. And then we must rely on INFF. Green finance cannot stay alone. Deputy Prime Minister. Deputy Prime Minister and Dr. Adit, Dr. Adit have already told to you that the Thai government has so many incentives for attracting the investment and also carbon taxation in the future. And the next question, how are we going to make this taxation system to create revenue for the government, government and reduce the pollution in overall there is actually there is the tax tax for protecting the environment and the tax for tax for transition and as i lo told you that in order to make industry greener we need to help people how we're gonna help people we need to have budget to help people or make people to reduce pollution like when we drive cars even though the fuel gets fuel price get higher we still have to by the fuel but then how the government will be able to have better investment in public uh, transportation so green finance cannot stay alone and as ilo said social protection to help people get jobs help people to go through transition help people to get out from dirty industry to cleaner industry and help women 
focus on women more than men. And I would like to show you that this is UNDP has worked with the stock exchange of Thailand. There are 15 investment opportunity area, 15 investment opportunity areas. Eight out of 15, eight out of 15 are involved with the green industry. So all of these show opportunities, critical opportunities of how are we gonna make Thailand to attract the internal and external funds to take care of environment and people at the same time. And I would like to conclude with this diagram. Actually, INFF, how it's gonna help, is gonna help on green action, is gonna make environment to be the first priority of government and gonna help eradicate the regulatory barriers and help all of the finance sectors to get together. Lastly, I would like to leave with you that green financing, take care of environment and people have to go in parallel because good environment, good, I mean, healthy people will stay in a healthy environment. Are we gonna save people or save environment, but the human development report of UNDP, this is an obsolete question. We have to help both people and trees, otherwise we will help nothing. UNDP is an agency that we uh, would like to partner up with all of you to make green finance, or uh, to make the finance in overall to achieve SDGs. Thank you very much. Anouk, uh, indeed, I agree that uh, an integrated uh, national financing framework will really help to bring together a large variety of uh, of stakeholders uh, to uh, create action and uh, to meet the really huge financing needs for a, a green economy transition. Uh, next, uh, we will hear from Mr. Abu Saeed, who will talk about green industry and smart agribusiness. What do you Abu? Please try to make your presentation a little bit shorter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nimi. Good afternoon, colleague. I will be briefly talking on the green industry and smart agribusiness and sharing with you some of the example of the work that UNIDO is doing with, uh, with the member state. Let me share with you briefly about the uh, uh, green industry definition, how uh, we uh, see it here at UNIDO. We uh, talk about uh, two-pronged strategy about green industry. One is greening existing industries through resource efficiency applications and also promotion of the pollution prevention in terms of the waste minimization and also reduction of the emissions. We also talk about the responsible chemical use in terms of the green, green chemistry in order to green the existing industries. On the creation of the green industries, we talk about the creation of renewable and clean tech uh, industries, and also promotion of materials recovery and recycling industries. At the same time, uh, promoting pollution control uh, industries, for example, POPs and EUS. Let me share with you some of the work that we are offering to our member states under the a partnership for action on green economy to promote the green industry. We are uh, providing support in, in different dimensions. For example, on the policy planning and prioritization front, we developed several tools and methodologies to support the green industry transition. For example, uh, we developed the green industry and trade assessment tools, which specifically helps uh, to assess the status of the country towards the green industrialization and identify what would be the priority sector for the economy, for the, for the country to improve on the green industrialization. For example, in, uh, in Indonesia, we conducted this green industry and trade assessment and identified four priority sector, fertilizer, cement, iron and steel and food and beverage. And we are subsequently working on those sector. 
And uh, uh, second, we develop another tool called Green Industry Progress Index tool. This is a quantitative tool which can track the progress of of the industries at the provincial or also at the industry level and can exactly figure out what are the indicators, either it is CO2 or it is the other employment indicator that government needs to focus on in order to improve its uh, green industry promotion in, in the country. At the sectoral level, we, uh, depending on the needs and priority of the country, we conduct the thematic diagnostic, also develop the policy. For example, in, uh, in South Africa, we are working with the government in developing the biomaterials market, both from the supply and demand side uh, in South Africa. In, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, we are working with the Ministry of Economy and Finance and also with the Ministry of Energy to do the piloting of resource efficiency and develop a resource efficiency action plan for the government for adoption. Not only developing policy or conducting assessment, we are also supporting countries to build the capacity through organizing workshops, trainings on the green industry agenda. Let me turn the focus on uh, agribusiness. Uh, we see that uh, the agribusiness sector is facing multiple challenges across the world in terms of uh, growing population. And we also see the challenges that, that is coming from the climate change front, for example, with flooding and drought and the depletion of natural resource uh, in the area of water and land. At the same time, we see because of the ur urbanization and growth, the, uh, the number of young people are not uh, that much attractive to, to, to the agribusiness. So what is the solution of this, uh, the, uh, to, to these challenges? The solution is the smart agribusiness. Smart agribusiness, we mean the application of digital technologies to the entire agriculture value chain to improve the efficiency throughout the entire value chain. So uh, by, by applying uh, technology, we mean it could be the uh, artificial intelligence or robotics or blockchains or, or geographical positioning system in order to enhance the efficiency of the entire agriculture value chain production. Unido is, uh, if we take the entire value chain to consideration, Unido is working uh, in the upstream and also in the downstream of the, of the value chain uh, through three, uh, specifically three dimensions. For example, we are working with, uh, on the human capa capacity development through organizing workshops and trainings. We are working with the government in uh, shaping the regulatory environment or developing the policy. And in terms of the precision agriculture, we are uh, coordinating with the low-tech uh, manufacturing uh, companies in order to develop low-tech solutions for the precision agriculture. I would be happy to share with you uh, quickly uh, two, three example of the work that we are doing uh, in the area of the smart agribusiness. For example, in, in uh, Tunisia, we supported uh, a young entrepreneur to develop the smart farm mobile applications to monitor and enhance the breeding, health, and well being of the cattle. We also supported to develop a smart milk app to trace and also improve the quality and quantity of the milk production. In uh, Ghana, we conducted a piloting study, uh, checking or exploring the readiness of the coca value, uh, value chain readiness in terms of applying this blockchain technology and what are the, we identified what are the challenges and benefits and this particular uh, uh, guidebook or assessment can also provide suggestion to the other country that what they need, need to focus on if they would like to apply the blockchain in, in the agriculture value chain. And uh, at the same time, Unido uh, has this idea program, the innovation, development, and entrepreneurship for all. This is an incubation program uh, through, through uh, an apps that where the young entrepreneurs are trained for six months with the mentor and to upscale their ideas to in order to contribute to the uh, to the jobs and also add value to the to the local agroeconomic development 
So uh, I will leave it here. If you'd like to explore more on this agribusiness, you could uh, take a look on this lo uh, link that is provided in, in the slide. Uh, thank you uh, uh, for, for, for listening to the presentation. I would like to give the floor back to Nimi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abu, for keeping it short and uh, for telling us about uh, Unido's contribution to the agro industry, especially the um, innovative uh, digital uh, applications that really help farmers to uh, scale up their work and also to improve traceability. I'll move on to uh, our next presentation, which is from uh, uh, Ms. Claire Potdevin from uh, UNEP on financing mechanism enabled for sustainable waste management. Over to you. Thank you very much. I will try to keep it short. Uh, uh, can you see my slide? Yes, we can see your slides. Uh. Oh, geez. someone was trying to come in the room. Okay, uh, I will. Um, I will now talk about green fiscal policies for any. Closing green economy. Uh, I am the economy and industry division, um, and I will. Sorry, Claire. It seems there are some connection problems. Forward. I would just ask if some people who are not muted could please mute. Uh, their microphones, maybe this will help. How about now? Is it better? Yeah, I think it's better now. Should I uh, interrupt again? So first, a little bit of and the objective of green fiscal policies. So uh, very often, The resources that we used are cost, the environmental cost, and also the health costs of using the resources is actually not included. And those hidden costs are actually used. Uh, actually huge, sorry. Um, we are talking here about an overall environmental degradation, which can cost up to several. Uh, Claire, excuse me. Uh, can you hear points me? Of GDP, depending on the, I guess. Excuse me. Can you hear me? I think uh, that the connection is not very well. So, uh, would you mind if uh, we uh, uh, show the slide for you? Uh, that might help a bit with your connection, and you can just tell us when you when to advance the the slide. Okay. Let, let Let's try that yeah, way. Sounds good. All right. Hold on one sec. One sec. Okay, you see the slide yet? Yeah. All right, I think that's better. Uh, you can continue. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great slide. Um, now let me just open my slide on the slide. Please, please, I'm on the call. Thank you. I'll finish. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay, so um, let's just move on to the next slide. So 
Okay, so regarding the oh, sorry, previous slide. Claire, uh, one more time. Uh, okay, so I'll just you, you can turn off your video and let only your voice come through. That might help a bit with your with your connection. All right, okay. let's try this way. Okay, let's try that. Okay, how about maybe um, I will break, I will let my colleague from UNITAR uh, come first. And in the meantime, I'm going to connect on a different Wi-Fi. Maybe that will help. How about this? Uh, Amra, is that okay for you? Claire, can you... Uh, you... Um, you... Amra, uh, Claire was suggesting that uh, you, you come in first and she tries to sort out her connection. Is that okay for you? Okay. Okay, great. So if we just move on to Amre's presentation uh, uh, now, uh, which is on uh, Green Economy Academy and our capacity building program, and then we will take a uh, uh, clear later. Over to you, Amre, please. Uh, thank you. I'm just... Uh pulling up my uh, presentation. Could you just confirm if you can see my presentation? Okay, first of all, Savadika, dear participants, and um, it's really great pleasure to be able to speak at the uh, uh, launch event today. And I know it's the end of a very long day and a very rich discussion. So uh, some of you might actually feel like this little girl here on the slide. So, but I still hope to be able to raise your interest, um, given that my presentation is really about a key issue, no? the, which is uh, important to all the um, policy changes and different initiatives we have been discussing. So I I'm, I'm, will share a few reflections about how to actually build human capacity for bringing about an um, inclusive green economy transformation. And... Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, I also want to build, of course, on the presentation that was already done by the colleague from Tamasat University. But let me start by giving a, a short overview about how we are approaching at UNITAR uh, capacity development or human capacity development uh, on the page. So uh, first of all, I think we, um, uh, we have a, a set of global training products, and I think Nimi already mentioned a few of those and has already shared uh, the links for that. Uh, just to say, I think the global learning products in our experience are really helpful for uh, basic uh, capacity development or training. No? So um, um, as also the colleague from Tamasat University pointed out, often we actually have uh, basic awareness. And by the way, I think that is also different from maybe 10 years ago no? when we started to work also as page on green economy. I feel at the time, even because now, if we look at the analysis that was done by at Commonwealth University, you can actually see that there is already quite a bit of, you know, basic awareness and understanding of these issues across sectors and, and um, uh, stakeholders. However, then when it comes to the application and the, the kind of practicing skills, that is often still lacking. So just to say that I think from the global level side, I think also from page side, we have been able to make a contribution to build basic uh, understanding uh, on green economy concepts over the year. So with our uh, green economy courses, for example, we have been able to reach over 30,000 people worldwide. And uh, I all invite you all to, to take these courses. They are self-paced and can be taken at any time. Uh, but then I think when it comes to really the skills that are needed for applying you now those uh, or for actually advancing uh, policy reform um, in countries, the, the nationally focused um, support is really key, obviously. And there, uh, from our side, we always recommend to, to not just jump directly into the uh, learning activities, but really to uh, step back and do a systematic assessment of 
learning needs. Um, and from there, we then uh, have two, let's say, um, uh, ways of uh, engaging. So one is, of course, together with uh, the other page partner agencies, we are delivering uh, executive trainings on uh, key issues directly to stakeholders, and I will come to that. For example, we are planning a training on uh, emission trading schemes. But I think what's really also very close to my heart and where I'm convinced that it can actually make a difference is the collaboration with national education and training institutions and i think the the great work we have been doing with tamasat or that tamasat has been actually doing uh, themselves is really a good example of that so the idea is really to integrate these issues into the recurrent trainings also offered by uh, universities uh, and other training institutes in countries so just to illustrate how we have been doing this also in in other countries in the region so here's an example from indonesia we have been supporting Indonesia in uh, doing a systematic learning assessment in support of the Low Carbon Development Initiative of the government. So here again, it was uh, actually the methodology was a little bit similar to what uh, was done by Tamasat University. So we looked at different competencies you know, in different sectors, uh, looked at the uh, learning priorities, but also at the capacities within the country to actually deliver this type of training. And just to say, when we do these assessments, one thing which is important, I think which also came out clearly in Indonesia, that often there are already a lot of initiatives that focus on the technical issues, but often we forget the other competencies that are needed to bring about policy reform and change. So for example, about participatory competencies, no? So you might have a great understanding, for example, about how to, or, or the pros and cons of carbon taxation. But uh, oftentimes what we see in, 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 the, uh, you know, in practice is that uh, the participatory management of this process, you know, whereby you involve different stakeholders, et cetera, that also really uh, requires a great deal of skills, but those are often not covered in the trainings. We only uh, kind of focus on the, on the technical side. So I think that was also something we, we found in Indonesia and where we discussed with partners that it would be important to address it going forward. Um, and yeah, just to say that also in Indonesia, we are now um, uh, working on implementation, again, in partnership with national universities and training centers. So, for example, we are working with five universities um, in delivering uh, a course on green economy modeling. Because this was one of the priorities identified. Uh, and we are also working with the training center of the National Planning Agency, BAPENAS, uh, to develop um, a reference module that will be rolled out uh, through their recurrent training program at national but also at subnational level. And here, I think that could be also interesting uh, for Thailand maybe to discuss going forward with the partners how we can also really scale up training at subnational level. And I think that could also link very well with the presentation that was done or the work that is being done on the uh, fund, on the Green Recovery Fund by the government. Uh, because obviously, as we can see already from the selection of the pilot projects, a lot of this work is actually not only done at the national level, but it's really down to the subnational stakeholders. One other example I wanted to share, because it's actually not paged, but I thought I would briefly mention it, uh, is from, um, from the region. <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually my daughter is very sick and I'm at home. So, okay. so um, just to say the um, uh, we have had this other training. I very briefly wanted to mention it to you because Thailand is involved. It was a regional academy, and I thought it could be interesting to mention because oftentimes, of course, the challenges. For example, here was about a clean energy transition, which I understand is also uh, really uh, a priority for the Thai government. Um, and the, the issues, of course, are very similar no? uh, across the region. So while we want to focus on applied training, uh, we also want to at the same time uh, enable their regional experience sharing. So here we had a kind of combination whereby we had kind of plenary sessions which allowed for a dialogue among different countries. And then we had kind of a national coaching, uh, which then helped to uh, put into practice some of these general concepts and discuss them and learn about them in the context of each country. 
Uh, then maybe just to finish up, uh, what's in the pipeline uh, under page uh, for Thailand? So for Munita side, we will uh, support capacity building on emission trading systems. So here again, our um, uh, training will build on the technical analysis done by other page partners and even other development partners, and of course also the government. And uh, here we also want to focus on the uh, uh, we are proposing to focus on the national level, but also to involve again subnational level actors, and also relating to what I was uh, saying earlier about the importance actually of participatory governance and, and stakeholder consultations. It will be a mix of trainings, but also uh, involvement of uh, key actors through stakeholder consultations. Um, and we also are proposing to uh, again apply the concept of coaching, so not to only have the workshop but then also help participants again as they are going back to their work to uh, apply what they have learned on the job this is my last slide just to put a question for for discussion maybe it's not today but over the next month i think from our side we are in, really interested as unitar in in quality as i was saying systematic learning needs assessment and making sure we focus on skills development rather than just knowledge transfer but also really uh, the question of scale you know and there, I think it would be really interesting to discuss uh, within PAGE, with the government, but also with other development partners, what can we do in addition to really scale up learning the green economy through the national education and training system. And uh, here, let me just um, go back to, to my first slide, you know, with the little girl, uh, even her at that stage. You now, I think if we really talk about a green economy transition now, how can we make sure even at that age or, you know, at least secondary school, some of these key issues are being taught? And then even if I think about the two million university students in Thailand, what are they learning about a green economy? So I think these are questions we would want to discuss further with you. Thank you so much. For Thank you so much, Anre. Um, it was really um, uh, interesting to listen to how to listen, okay, to listen to how UNITA uh, uh, is working at national level uh, to really go beyond uh, the online uh, learning packages uh, that PAGE um, uh, provides uh, at the global level, such as really building the skills uh, of policymakers, um, maybe on uh, part uh, participatory processes, but also connecting uh, um, to the local uh, academic institutions to help to scale up uh, um, learning packages. Uh, I think I'll move on now to Claire. Um, uh, should we just quickly test your uh, microphone to see? Yes, can you hear me okay now? Uh, I can hear you, there's still a bit of an echo, but uh, we can try. Okay. We just tested in a breakout room and it seemed okay on this new Wi-Fi. Hopefully it can go forward. Uh, may I can be asked you to share the slides? Okay, uh, is someone sharing a clear slides please? Oh, great. I can see the slides now. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, very well. Um, can I can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So yeah, I'll try to keep it even shorter, but just to give you a quick summary of uh, the purpose and the role of green fiscal policies um, to help to help address this issue of hidden costs in um, the our consumption and production. Um, so. The idea is that through fiscal policies, um, we can try and internalize those external negative costs. Um, and there are different types of instruments for that, uh, which I will go through a bit later. But basically, the idea is to bring the producers and the consumers to cover the costs of those negative externalities, um, for example, by bringing in a tax on carbon or on pollution. And that allows um, in, in addition, the state to mobilize additional revenues, which can then be reinvested in um, greener, more sustainable uh, form of economy. Uh, for example, by subsidizing greener practices, uh, by redirecting investment from fossil fuel to renewable energy. Um, 
and in, se in that sense, uh, you're making the, those greener practices more competitive, relatively so to more polluting one. Um, <clears throat> so in addition to the internalization of those costs, um, as well as the uh, mobilization of revenue, um, another objective of green fiscal policies is to improve the effectiveness of public spending. So making sure that each dollar is spent in the most impactful way um, and in the most uh, both social and green way, of course. So that requires, for example, to track and to measure the impact of green versus non-green investment um, through, for example, a sustainable budgeting instrument. And lastly, I would like to follow up on what my yellow colleague said earlier about the fact that there are no green jobs without social protection. Um, there is a similar idea here in the sense that there is no green fiscality without integrating the concept of equity and making sure that the tax system is, is fair and redistributive. So that this is the overall idea um, of a, a green fiscal policy form of reform. And the next slide, please. Okay, so I will actually uh, move maybe further um, uh, without stopping here. These are just, if you want to have a look later, a few examples of the potential impact or the actual impact of different different uh, tax reforms um, uh, that have taken place. Uh, let's move to the next slide. So. Regarding uh, our work in practice through PAGE, um, we have been supporting green fiscal policies in quite a number of countries, mostly through direct technical assistance, um, either by producing general fiscal policy scoping studies or also through more sector-oriented analysis. Um, I will give examples of that later. Um, and this in-country work is uh, done in parallel with global research on topics like sustainable budgeting or uh, repurposing of harmful subsidies, such as, for example, the repurposing of subsidies to fossil fuel, um, as well as the delivering of training and, and support to police dialogue. Next slide, please. Um, so there, there are quite a few instruments that we can use um, uh, as part of this, uh, this reform effort. Um, with always this objective of freeing fiscal resources and removing negative incentives. Um, <clears throat> we can work with price incentives like subsidies, grants, um, tax, tax credits, tax exemptions. Um, so these are, these are quite widely used. Um, they are, for example, a way to um, overcome higher upfront costs for investments in greener public procurement or um, sustainable infrastructure. Um, there is, a full, of course, the case of uh, environmental taxes, which I'm sure you're familiar with. As those include energy tax, uh, pollution tax, uh, which are a great way to um, address uh, issues related to pesticides or waste. Um, of course, a very famous carbon tax on producing and consuming fossil fuels, but also um, other examples like resource tax, uh, which covers the, the issue of extraction and uh, water pollution, minerals, etc. Other investment, uh, other instruments, sorry, that we use can include um, investment funds, which are then owned by the state, um, usually financed by natural resources, and they can be used as a green investment instrument. Um, and the idea here is to channel resources from sector like extractive, for example, towards um, a green investment. Next slide, please. So this uh, refers to what I was saying earlier. Um, Fiscal policies are, of course, a very cross-cutting instrument, uh, which we can tailor to the country's needs and the specificities of the economy. Um, these are a few examples of sectors we've, we've worked with through PAGE um, and uh, the, the countries where we've been conducting those, uh, those studies and this, this work. Next slide, please. So to finish, I will just show a couple of examples of uh, work that we've done um, in the sector specifically of uh, food systems, agriculture and food systems. Uh, the first one is a case is a case of Kyrgyzstan, um, where we built on a study that was done by Biofin previously. And we looked more specifically at uh, what one type of subsidy, which was a tax cut on personal income tax for sales of agricultural produce. So um, uh, farmers would pay less, less taxes on the sale of their, uh, of their production. And 
although the purpose of this subsidy was to support agricultural producers, um, because it was fully targeted, um, it was. Uh, we found out that it actually benefited mostly wealthy farmers, more than um, the the poor share of the, of the of the farmer population. So in the end, it had a very limited redistrib redistribution, oh, sorry, impact, and it was very costly to the government. So we found that by reforming this subsidy, uh, the government could save up to forty six million dollars a year. Um, in addition to support, and the, these these uh, free fiscal space could then be reinvested in a more sustainable form of agriculture, such as organic farming. The second uh, case of work that we just finished recently is Mauritius. Um, so that was another another page work um, where we looked at. Um, the environmental and socioeconomic impact of their fiscal framework in the agricultural sector. And the results really highlighted how the government could reap really big benefits from repurposing subsidies that are currently uh, very costly um, and apply to inorganic imported fertilizers. And these could be reappropriated to support, for example, locally produced bio uh, fertilizers. Um, so this this are just two examples of, of findings um, that that we that were um, developed through uh, paid studies and that it formed uh, policy making development plans. Next slide, please. So I will stop here. I really tried to keep it short, given the, the fact that we are already quite over time, but I hope it was clear enough. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out um, if you want to discuss this topic some more. Over to you. Thank you so much, Claire. Indeed, the uh, fiscal reforms become even more important now in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also with the ongoing global uh, financial and energy uh, crisis. Uh, so to wrap it up, uh, you can see that um, the page agencies are working on different topics, uh, but very interrelated. And we try to complement uh, each other in the work that we do, but always based on the needs uh, uh, that have been identified uh, by the government and also prioritized uh, in the scoping study. Um, with that, uh, we um, uh, can come uh, uh, to the end of this uh, session. I think we will not the Q and A because we are already uh, over uh, more than twenty minutes uh, beyond uh, uh, time. But uh, uh, we, uh, the questions can be sent and uh, uh, responded to uh, online. I will just hand over now to uh, Ms. Limo, uh, uh, Arun, our page filer national coordinator, to make uh, the concluding and closing remarks. โอเวอร์ทูยูซูโมแลนด์แทงกิวทูออลสปีกเกอร์แทงกิวแทงกิวนิมิไฮนิมิแทงกิวโซมัชขอบคุณนะคะในตอนสุดท้ายแทงกิ
the capacity in BCG model in agricultural sector, and lastly, will be the financing solution, financing solution for community waste management in a sustainably manner. Use finance to to drive forward. So today, I would like to thank all of you here, and I would like to thank all speaker who gave us the honor to share knowledge, experience, and study with all of these inputs that we need to move forward. And we need partnership from everyone. And then you will be contacted by page program asking for your kind cooperation for all public agency, all private agency and civil society organization that we all need to contribute as the deputy prime minister said we would like to invite all of you to join page program you are all our partners now you if you have not shown the commitment on green economy please do so and you're gonna get the green pins please be reminded that you are the partners of page program and in the future, we will come back in the next three years after the end of the program, we will celebrate our great success and we will report the achievement of the green economy implementation in Thailand. So it's important that we need the uh, working group members that we got the order from the from the physical policy uh, research institute and the organizer who are our partners with the common with the common uh, objective i would like to thank everyone here and please follow up uh, news of our page program to facebook or the one who already have given us the emails we will contact you later Please follow us, the progress of our program. We will stay together for the next three to four years and we will celebrate success. That is all for today. And please have a safe trip home. And I would like to thank everyone here who joined us online and on site. Thank you very much. And people who join us on site here, please return your translation headset immediately. Thank you very much. Please uh, fill out the uh, evaluation form through the QR code and the link to the chat box in the Zoom. So everyone, please kindly fill out the questionnaire form. You may get the token of appreciation as a tree, as the token of appreciation for event launching. So that is all for today. On behalf of NESDC, working with UNIDO, and all of the partner agency, we would like to thank all of you again. See you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>